What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Chicken Bone Alley, brought to you by SRI Performance Stock Car Steel and Aluminum, Draco Springs. Our buddy Randy Keen over there, RK Motorsports Consulting, along with SRI Performance, and our buddy Earl Ramey with Earl Ramey Racing Engines. What is going on, guys? I am David. I'm Sterling. What's up, y'all? What is up? And we got another, I guess we'll call him our new, uh, our new, our uh, other, I guess, part-time co-host. <laughs> <laughs> we got one in Derek Griffith. Now we got another part-time co-host in Joey Coulter. Joey, what is up, man? Oh, just uh, glad to be out of the Texas heat and into some North Carolina heat. I thought it was going to be a little bit cooler, but. <laughs> is it any different, really? I don't know. It, it is. It is a little bit. Um, I don't. I don't think anybody believes it, but it is a little bit different. Oh, but but which one is worse? Is 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 a hundred degrees in Texas worse or a hundred degrees in North Carolina worse? If the cool part about Texas is is the shade makes a difference because there's not as much humidity, so it can be a hundred ten degrees in the sun, but like eighty five in the shade. So that's okay. Here it doesn't matter. Shade, sunshine, whatever. It's <laughs> nah, it's man. hot and muggy. I'm exactly hot, sticky, muggy. Oh, it's For been rough sure. today. Yes, yes, it has. Um, yes. our 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 buddy Rick Duzlack put on on Facebook. I think it was this morning, talking about up in Massachusetts, talking about oh, it was going to be a hot one, and they were going he was going to have to find him somewhere to buy him a slushy today. I was like, I ain't seen a slushy in forever for one thing. But then I went and looked at the Weather Channel, and I looked and it says hi. 87 degrees. I was like, I love 87 degrees right now. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. Well, it was, I mean, last weekend in Ohio, it was, I think, about record highs up there, man. It was ridiculous. So. Dude, we went to Eldora, and it was insane up there. It was like 95 degrees every day, and just as much humidity as down here in the south. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> why, why does that happen in Ohio? I'm still, I, I know I talked about last week, but I'm still worried about this. That shouldn't happen in Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I was wanting a break. <laughs> we didn't get that, that's for sure. But oh, we had some breaks in action this past week. Uh, man, I, I last week was eventful. Uh, me and Sterling, um, did we talk about last week that we joined the softball team for our church? I don't know that we did yet, really, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, we did. So <laughs> we are, uh, we, we're definitely part of the team now. So we're gonna see what happens. We gotta dust off our uh, our skills a little bit. Uh, see what we can do, man. I don't know. For sure. Joey, come play softball with us. Oh, boy. You guys want to see something embarrassing. That's <laughs> about the only thing you can get worse than that is me with a set of golf clubs. <laughs> don't, no, no, no. No, no. I've got <laughs> no. that covered. <laughs> I've got that covered. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. But I will say, and I've talked about this on here before, Top Golf. I don't know if you've ever, you've ever been to a Top Golf, Joey? I have. I have, yes. You can be horrible at golf, and that place is still awesome. Oh, oh, yeah, exactly, because it's, it's easier to get alcohol. <laughs> there you exactly. go. I was about to say, they keep coming to you and, and, and influencing you to do better. So. Everybody, Everybody's a winner. <laughs> so exactly. Everybody. Right, exactly. You, you can't go wrong. That's right. Yeah, and you don't you don't have to go find your ball after you hit it. <laughs> yeah, because I'm You just searching. grab another one. There you exactly. go. Just hit, tap the machine. It sends you another one. You Take a little magic wand, and you, sh- you know, flash it over there, and you got another ball. That's cool. Exactly. Yep, <laughs> that's, that's, right. that's more my speed. Yeah, so we're gonna see what happens. We we decided to uh, instead of we I hadn't played softball in shoot probably twelve years now at least, and uh, so I decided we decided to uh, start this thing back up in the summer league of all of all times of the year. So <laughs> what were we thinking? I don't really know. <laughs> we were not thinking at all. Oh, uh, I went by the, by the place we'll be playing at last t- last night. Uh, it does have lights. I, I did confirm. All it does right, have lights. We're going to make sure that no, we cannot start games until 9 o'clock. We exactly. Make, make sure it's dark. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, no, we're looking forward to that. It's coming up here in a couple of weeks. But uh, I want to tell everybody happy Father's Day. Uh, Joey, happy Father's Day to you for sure, man, and uh, everybody else listening out there. Um, yeah, thanks. How was your uh, Father's Day weekend? Oh, it was good. Um, I mean, we... It was kind of a, a wild one, but that's typically how it works in our house. Um, so I left Texas on Thursday and uh, or Friday. Can't even keep my days straight. One of them days. Uh, I drove from Texas to uh, Smoky Mountain Speedway basically on Friday um, to race on Saturday. And then after that, uh, I left at like 6 in the morning on Sunday, stopped at Charlotte Airport, picked up the wife and the kids, and I uh, spent Father's Day up here in Union Grove at my parents' house, so it was uh, a little bit of a little bit of running around, but it was it was nice to 
hang out and chill out yesterday. Ooh, I had figured you. I figured you had flown from from Texas up there, but you drove. Yeah, yeah, I drove just because we're gonna be here for we're gonna be in the Carolinas for a couple weeks. So rather than uh, rather than pay Avis or Hertz twenty five thousand dollars to rent a car for a week uh i just figured i'd suck it up and drive so well, well i'm just letting you know me and sterling figured this out when we went to ohio last week do not if you do get a rental car never get a nissan versa <laughs> no don't go, i i didn't never I, I never knew they made a car this small to be quite honest with you but uh but man we got a good deal well <laughs> We, yeah. were, we were only going to be there two days. So I was like, all right, well, I'm not going to go out and rent a big SUV or something for us to just drive back and forth. Well, there's a big difference in a Versa <laughs> and an SUV. I, we, we might could have went up a couple notches. <laughs> we had yeah, to sit we, in the back seat to be able to drive this thing. Yeah, well, you should have just got an SUV and hauled the Versa around as a backup. <laughs> yeah, you could exactly. put it in the back seat, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No doubt. <laughs> oh, it was fun. Um, man, uh, Joey, tell us a uh, little bit. As far as your week back in Texas, how to, what's a typical week for you, man? Uh, it just depends. I mean, here lately, uh, I've been super, super fortunate uh, for the that drive refined program that I put together. It's really starting to to take off, and um, I got a lot of drivers now, and uh, that's become a almost a full time twenty four seven gig. So. Uh, I guess it's it's not bad for a side job, so I, I'm digging it. But uh, usually the the beginning of the week, I mean, it's all uh, a lot of debrief work with the drivers I work with. Uh, and then about the time I get to Wednesday or Thursday, I start focusing on prep work for the drivers that I know are going to race. Um, and uh, in between there, I'm 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 always on the phone with Harold, uh, helping him with with some engineering side stuff on the on the dirt cars. Uh, and and that just kind of fills in all the holes and thankfully we got the both both kids are are in daycare so um my wife and i get a little bit of break from dirty diapers at least for a few (laughs) hours uh but other than that it's that's that's pretty much it all the time um it's that's the funny thing is everybody's like oh what do you do for a living well i race what do you do for fun i race um, but that's, that's how it is. Try to, try to hit the gym every once in a while and stay in shape. Um, but other than that, it's, it's, it's on the phone or behind the screen working with a, working with a driver somewhere. There you go. That's cool. Well, speaking of gym, um, I got a little insight over here that Sterling got him a gym membership. I how, did. How's that that's going? How's that going? Oh, well, it's going. I've gone. How many times? One, but I've gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've, it's only been a week, so ain't, you know, it ain't too bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to figure out when I can go and uh five o'clock in the morning is kinda t- you gotta be really motivated. I have done everything. I've tried to hide my phone so I can have to get up and remember where I put it to turn the alarm off so I can just be up. <laughs> it is really hard to get up at five o'clock to go to the gym real quick for work. <laughs> I I swore that having kids would turn me into a morning morning person. I think I hate it now more than I used to hate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I just, it doesn't matter what I do. I could, I could fall asleep at seven o'clock at night and I, I just, I don't like waking up at six, seven in the morning. Like, it's just not my thing. <laughs> I, I, you being around a bunch of other drivers in, in, in over your career, have you ever known any race car driver to be a morning person? Uh, no, because usually if I run into people that are morning people, I don't really hang out with them much. <laughs> I don't trust you. <laughs> uh, but no, uh, it, it is funny. Cause actually one of the drivers I work with him and his dad are both, uh, they're both in really good shape and that they're both, they're up at four thirty, five o'clock in the morning and they're in the gym for an hour every morning. And, uh, you know, usually him and I'll debrief it, uh, about nine o'clock in the morning, Eastern time, which is 8 AM my time. So I crawl out of bed about, you know, seven, seven, fifteen, seven, eighteen, seven, nineteen, if I can stretch it. <laughs> and uh I make a cup of coffee and sit down behind the computer and he's all hyped up, stretch, you know, sweating like crazy with pre workout wearing off, and I look like I just fell out of bed because I did. <laughs> uh and they give me crap for it all the time. But well, that's was, just uh like I said, it's just not my thing. Well, I'm gonna tell you, you um, uh, he might be a great guy, but you might need to get him a mental evaluation. <laughs> get yeah, four thirty. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Oh, well, 
Life's been the same over at school bus shop. School <laughs> buses all the time. Hey, that's you, man. That's, 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 you, got, you can do some tire flips and stuff over there, man. You can, I do that all the time. I, I did quite a few of those there. Oh, there you go. Lifting you brake drums. You're done good. On school buses. That's, You're done good. I, I got my workout. That's good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord, yeah. Oh, well, good deal. Well, uh, well, Sterling, we, uh, how was your Father's Day? It was good. Uh, actually, my uh, my little boy, Cole, he, uh, he was born on... Um, Father's Day, so his his birthday was nineteenth, so that was Saturday uh, this year. But anyway, uh, so that's pretty cool. So he had his he had his little birthday party at the uh, trampoline park, and um, yeah, I can't hardly do the trampoline park too good. That's <laughs> you talking about wear yourself out. Great day. Um, so we did that, and then uh, he wanted to go to a baseball game, so we went down there for that. Uh, set, or to the beach, Myrtle Beach, uh, for uh, the Pelicans baseball game, and. He uh he is all into some baseball now, Joey. I'm telling you what, man. I, he he wants to drive. He said he said I'm gonna play baseball, Daddy, till I till I grow up. And then when I grow up, I'm gonna drive a late model. I said, Well, son, you might want to start that a little sooner. <laughs> he ain't really yeah. figured that whole part out yet. But uh, but yeah, man, he loves it. So uh, so I try to kind of take some time up with him with that. And, um, but uh, yesterday went to church. Uh, had a good service there for uh for all the guy for all the dads there and um. We got some socks. Yeah, I'm gonna use them for baseball for, for softball team. Here we go. I'll do it. But uh, anyway, uh, came home and believe it or not, came home and played some baseball <laughs> outside with him. And then uh, then the uh, monsoon came from the uh, what was left of the tropical depression, I think, or whatever it was. And um, I sat inside and watched the race the rest of the day. Watched the Kyle Larson show anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for like the eighth week in a row, right? Exactly. Well, I'm telling you, if you if you not only watch uh just NASCAR, if you turn on flow racing or whatever else, it's kind of it's like Groundhog Day. <laughs> yeah. Did Did you guys catch his interview after the uh, after the All Star race? Yeah, I think it is. What, what he what part you talking about? He uh he just he gave the coolest shout out to Brandon Overton that oh, I've yeah, ever yeah, 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 like yeah, that I've yeah. ever seen in any type of racing ever. And I just, I don't know, I still, my wife and I both still think that was one of the coolest things ever because what what I think people, people that, that just watch racing, what I don't think they realize sometimes is somebody like Kyle Larson and, you know, like Tony Stewart was the same way. Robbie Gordon was, was somewhat the same way. But those guys that can jump from car to car to car and go win or run really well, like it's, it's, it's cool on, you know, the, the athlete side of it, right? Like, Oh, that's oh, cool. Yeah. You can do all that stuff. But I think the amount of fans that get drug around and get exposed to all that different type of racing, like, I don't think that gets enough value put on it yeah. because I guarantee you, like there's been fans that have never watched sprint cars that watch them now or watch dirt late models because Kyle Larson goes and races them sometimes. Uh, I think you're, 100% you know, and correct. yes, and vice versa. There's dirt fans that probably don't watch much NASCAR, but they probably watch some more now because of what Kyle does. So it it was just cool for I, I think it's cool that he can do that. And then for him to to acknowledge what what Overton did uh, was just I just thought it was really cool because a bunch of NASCAR people probably went and had to Google who Brandon Overton was. <laughs> yeah, you're right. After that. And that that just it does nothing but help the whole sport so i just thought it was really really cool yeah it definitely is and speaking of that uh as as much of a grind it is for you and you can kind of touch on what you would think or what it would be even how hard i mean i just, I just can't fathom kyle doing what he has done uh like eldor he went up there and ran that he was there wednesday thursday friday saturday went run the all-star race and then right back on a plane going back to ohio to run sprint cars I mean, what is that, and and what kind of? I mean, I just I can't fathom how he can do that. It's, I mean, if you can get, it's one of those things where, like, like I feel like if if I had the opportunity to do it, I would jump all over it. How long I could last doing it, I don't know, but I'd love to find out. Um, it's just, it's. It's one of those things, and I, I tell this to a lot of the drivers that I coach, that some of racing is repetition. Right. 
you know, you do something enough and it, it becomes second nature. And that's what I think. And I, I'm no psychologist and I don't know, I don't know Kyle that well at all. Um, but I just think he's, because he's raced so many different things so much, it's all repetition for him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like nothing's weird because he's done it all. Right. So there's no, Oh, well, I've never done this. I'm going to have to take a lap to figure it out. He's like, I've done everything for 25 years. So it just, I think once you get rolling and and you just start getting used to being in that environment, uh, it doesn't matter how wild it is. It all becomes a little bit second nature. And I, I think he's just, you know, whoever helps him plan things out too, like whoever does his scheduling is a genius has to be, (laughs) um, or it's, it's, it's that IBM Watson supercomputer doing it for him. But, uh, you know, I, I just, I think it's cool. I, I, like I said, I, I look up to those guys that, that can run that much and, and, you know, cause it takes a, it takes a, a village to do it, you know, especially married and kids and everything. It's support from them and people to help support them. Um, so yeah, it's, it's gotta be, uh, I, what, what I'd really be interested to ask him is what, what is like, what happens if he takes two weeks off? Exactly. He, like he what is, know. what's that, what's that second Wednesday feel like? <laughs> right. He don't know. Cause he's never done it. I don't think. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely not. And, that, and that's another thing too, Joy, that you kind of, you touched on. Um, and David and I were talking about earlier here in the last few years, um, the cup owners have, you know, well, years before, the cup owners didn't want their drivers doing anything. I don't know if it was insurance purposes or what it was or sponsorship related, whatever. But here in the past couple of years, it seems like they've kind of been more lenient, let the drivers do uh, more of the weekday stuff or whatever they wanted to do on their own. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, I think that's a big help for sure. And uh, we saw we saw something where I think Rick said, Rick Hendricks said something about, you know, come playoff time, um, you know, some of that stuff that, uh, Kyle's doing going to have to, you know, kind of go on the back burner a little bit. And like what me and David were saying was, I don't think he needs to do that. I mean, why change what's going now? It's obviously working, you know? Yeah. I mean, it, it's again, it, it, it just depends on, I would say everybody's different. I mean, I think, I, I think I, I've never been in, in the kind of pressure situations that, that those guys are in, but I would think just in general, when you get to that point, if you are running for a championship, which I think anybody would be silly to say that Kyle won't be, um, but any of those guys that run multiple stuff, I mean, I, it's to me, it's it's almost like working out, right? Like, right. Um, I've got a bunch of drivers uh, that are running the summer shootout, and they're running some other races in between that. And, you know, I've talked to them about talking to their fitness coach about, you know, don't stop, but don't don't push as hard because you're, you're giving yourself less time to recover between each race. And, you know, so I I think I I would think it would make sense for them to back off a little bit, but I definitely wouldn't, wouldn't think they would just stop. Um, because again, it's part of the rhythm. It's part of that repetition that, that keeps you fresh and, and keeps you going. So, but, but I could definitely, you know, at the end of the day, that's, that's the big money racing. and, And there is a lot of sponsorship on the line and, uh, when you get a chance at that championship trophy, um, that obviously becomes the priority. And I think that's, I think that's where some people maybe get it a little wrong and think that, Oh, well, he just doesn't care about winning the championship. It's, it's to me, it's, it's probably the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. I feel like that too. Um, but what's so cool about it? Like you were talking about, he's just such a, he, he seems like, I mean, beyond the whole racing aspect, he seems like such a down to earth guy most of the time to us because we were in the pits and he's just walking around signing autographs, walking by us, you know, waving to whoever. Then we look, he's up there in his own souvenir trailer, um, taking money from people and selling t-shirts. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I'm like, he's just, he's just a regular guy racing cars, man. I I think so too. And, and, (laughs) and it seems like here and Dave and I have talked about this before, but it seems like NASCAR in general has, has put a big fence up between, the drivers and the spect or in the fans and made, made the fans feel like the drivers are just this God essentially. And, and I think that's one good thing that's helped Kyle too over last year for sure. And he's kind of carrying it right on through this year is he's just a normal guy and he'll stand out there to trailer and he'll sign autographs for 30 minutes and then everybody leaves him alone. And yeah, 
I kind of wish that would go back to that way in NASCAR because we've had hot passes and, you know, walking through the pits, <clears throat> dude, you got to run them down and they don't want them. They just don't want to give you the time of day. seems like anymore. It's kind of like they hang, they, they, they're, they're not too good for it necessarily, but they forget what's why they're there. If that right. Makes sense. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I've, it's something that's always bugged me because like I, when I, when I was in the truck series and stuff, I mean, you know, it, it is busy and there's a certain time of the day when, when the game face goes on and you kind of zone out to stuff like that, but it's just, you know, you're, you're talking within an hour or two hours before the race, not when you're walking in the pit gate at nine o'clock in the morning, you know, it is serious. And you know, there is, there is a part of it where you can't, you can't stop and sign every t-shirt. You can't have a 10 minute conversation with everybody because you just, you got to get yourself in the right mindset. You got to do your job. Right. Um, but at the same time, like I've seen, I, I've seen drivers put more effort into avoiding fans and getting away from fans than, than they would have spent if they just stopped and took a picture or two, Absolutely. Well, you know, <laughs> and that, that part drives me nuts because I, you know, I, I was a race fan long before I was a driver and way long before I ever got to uh, some sort of professional level. So I I've always just every driver I coach, I tell them all the time. I'm like that the kid's hand that you shake his, his, and it's not obviously the only reason that you do it, but you know, you spend, you spend time with a fan, whether it's 30 seconds or five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever that kid's dad could be your next sponsor. That kid could be your next sponsor. Yep. But if you if you don't if you don't take the time to make that fan or even if it's not your fan just take the time like they bought a ticket they bought pit pass they're buying beer for eight dollars maybe not kids but you know what i mean right it you just got to take time to do it that's part of your job it's what you signed up for if you don't want to do that you know go race scca or something there you go exactly (laughs) and uh and, and that's 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 funny too because uh scott bloomquist told us almost the exact same thing yeah, sure did. Exact yep. same. So, and I think he's figured it out a little bit too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, while we while we kind of on the cup stuff, uh, I want to know your thoughts on uh, Kyle Busch getting hundred one hundred wins in the Xfinity Series, man. I think it's awesome. I mean, I know there's a lot of people that hate Kyle, but I mean, he just. I'm, I'm again, like I'm one of those people that, you know, no matter how much I hate the Patriots, Bill Belichick's still a really good coach, you you know, Tom Brady's not my favorite, but he's one of the best, you know, Mm -hmm. it's, you just have to, you got to recognize the success, I think. And, and again, Kyle's one of those people that he just, to me, he, he, if he branched off and did, you know, I know he's driven other things, but the little bit that I drove for him, he, he's another one of those guys that I think could get outside the box and, and go drive something and win in it because he's just, it's that raw natural ability and he's always driving. I mean, like, again, he, he didn't run that race. Uh, you know, he, he doesn't run those races for no reason. Right. It's help. It's helping him for Sunday, whether, you know, whether he ever says it or not, it's just part of the, again, part of the rhythm. It's part of, part of getting ready and, you know, it doesn't matter how, how many years you've been doing it. Seat time is seat time. And you, those guys, they're, they're good at what they do because they're always figuring something else out. Exactly. That's it. That's it. Yeah. It was pretty impressive to see, um, Kyle do that. And it's, it's been impressive to see, you know, over the years, how he's done it and the different cars mm-hmm. he's done it in. And how so, quickly he's done it. Really. Yeah. And, and relatively how quickly. Yeah. That's been pretty quick. Because, you know, back in the day, Mark Martin wasn't limited. He could run whatever, whenever, that are kind of limited on when they can run them. So, uh, yeah. so yeah, it's definitely pretty cool. Mm-hmm. For sure. All right. Well, moving over a little bit to to more Joey Coulter stuff. Uh, first of all, I want to ask you, uh, we've been talking about your uh, driver development deal going on. Um, how many how many drivers you got up under you now? Uh, let's see. It's about, it's about 15, and eight of them are, are all part of, or eight or nine of them, are all part of uh, Joe Ryan race cars uh, running in the, the Legend Series and some Bandoleros. You'll do. Sweet. You'll do. Yeah, yeah, we've we've seen a bunch of them guys up even in uh, Ohio and stuff with, with mm-hmm. Joe Ryan and them. And 
running on the dirt up there with our buddies up there. So yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's it's been really cool working with them because one, it's uh, I get to work with with drivers that don't have like they're building their foundation for racing. Uh, and it's fun because it's, you know, I can, for lack of a better expression, I can, I can break all of the bad habits before they even form. Right. Uh, and it's, it's just really cool because Joe Ryan and, and all of them over there do, they do a really good job preparing those cars for those kids. And even the ones that don't race out of Joe's shop, um, like, uh, Trevor Krauss up in, uh, up in Maine and New Hampshire, whole new England area. Uh, he just picked up his, uh, I think it was his first win uh, at Wiscasset Speedway, uh, and he again he's under the Joe Ryan banner, but but him and his dad and and crew work on the car up north, and it's just been really cool working with them because you get you get a bunch of different personalities, a bunch of different styles, um, and that's the chess game for me is figuring out how to coach each one of them uh, a little bit differently to to get the most out of what they got. And I know we uh, touched on it the last time you were on, but I want to go a little more in depth in it. Um, we know when you say coaching them, you're not necessarily dri- talking always driving coaching. You're talking more out of the car and all this other stuff. T- tell us a little more in depth about that, if you will. Yeah. So the the special thing about driver fine is it's not it's not the at the track uh, turn here, turn there, break here, do this, do that style coaching. It's way more focused on teaching each individual driver how to learn what their style is and and learn how to make their own adjustments as a driver on the fly um because what i tell people all the time is i'm not trying to get you good at racing a late model i'm trying to get you to be the best race car driver that you can be so that you can maybe you're racing late models but if you get a call to go drive a modified or a street stock or an arca car or a dirt car you have the foundation and you have the tools to be able to figure it out and go fast, you know? So that's again, like I, I, I mentioned it earlier, like I admire those guys like Kyle, Tony Stewart, Robbie Gordon. Um, I push myself to be as much like them driving wise as possible because it just puts you in that position where you can get a phone call any day to go drive any car and, and do a good job doing it. And that to me, that's, that's what being a, a great race car driver is, is, is being able to do it in anything. Right. That's right. For sure. So, that's, yeah. That's, so a lot of the, a lot of it's focused on that. That's a cool deal you got going on there, man. I, I, I like that. I like, like giving these younger guys, especially uh, a, a direction, I guess, more or less. Mm-hmm. And because that's, that's what it seems. We, we, well, we've talked with a lot of younger ones. We have. You know, going to tracks and stuff, younger guys that, that don't have that coaching and and they're it, not lost driving don't get me wrong but outside the car and, and well it's just like you know there, there's they lack person that, i think it's a lot mm-hmm. of do because of the, the the phones this area and all <laughs> this but honestly a lot of the younger guys we talk to they lack personality like they can't talk to people and and be personable with them and i think you know kind of going back earlier you know you're spending time with your fans whether you're 14 or not, there are people just showing up to watch you. So, you know, Mm -hmm. for them to be able to understand that side of it is very important. Yeah, it is. And it's, it all, it all ties together. I mean, cause you you just gotta, you can't, no different than it's no different driving a car than it is talking on camera or doing a radio show. You can't, you can't worry about everything that you're going to say. You can't worry about every time you turn the wheel or pick the gas up. You, you just have to do it and you got to get comfortable doing it. The more That's comfortable right. you are, the better you're going to do it, the faster you're going to do it, the less words you say backwards. Like it's, it's all part of rhythm. Um, and I think a lot of times, you know, you, again, you see it driving and you see it with, with kids doing interviews or, or talking to sponsors. They just overthink it because they think they have to be a certain way. Right. And at the end of the day, all everybody wants is just, just be real. That's it. That's it. That's you know, exactly. just, just be real. Um, uh, because that gets you way farther, you know, driving, talking any of that stuff it's just there there you know there's there's schools and you know learning how to roll your sponsors out you know without taking a breath like that's all great and people appreciate it but that being real and and messing up every once in a while is is what what people always realize you know yeah for sure and i'm gonna tell you what speaking of that i think the most 
I guess, polished, you will say, on camera. And it's so funny because there has been moments he's been horrible on camera. But one of the most polished I see out there for some reason, Kurt Busch. You never, <laughs> yeah. hear, you never hear Kurt say, uh, or anything like that, or, 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 or stumble yeah. over anything. No, it is straight through. I'm, I'm like, how sure. do you do that? Yeah, I don't sure. understand. I'm pretty sure he's been to one of those speeching classes for sure, yeah. Uh, he, <laughs> he has, and he, he just, he's, he was, he was at the top, I and mean, he's probably still on top of his game, but when he was winning champions and stuff, championships and all that 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 was that time when it was about being polished and professional and you know dress shirts at the racetrack kind of thing um because things were just exploding you had sponsorship money pouring everywhere um you know there was there was no uh no lack of anything and i I think that's what people were looking for then they wanted uh, that's when nascar started i think personality wise to get away from the the air fingers quote good old boy yeah uh persona which again whether it's a driver or a series or whatever people just want what's real they don't you're fake, right fake, I think fake gets called out well i think they're starting to realize that now i honestly do because it kind of seems like and i'm not just gonna use a couple names i mean I, kyle larson he's more real to me uh chase Elliott's more real um Alex Bowman for sure. Right, <laughs> definitely mm-hmm. Alex Bowman. But you know, Ryan Blaney outside of a uh, Ryan Blaney outside of a TV interview is the most real dude I think you could ever talk to. But it seems like when you get him in front of the camera on NBC or something, he's just so he is, he is Team Penske. That's I'm what telling he is. you, he man. Is team Woo. Penske at that point, totally different. Oh <laughs> uh, well, anyway, man. Well, moving on from that a little bit. Uh, if we get stuck on this, we'll go forever. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but uh, but um, anyway, so you had some time at the racetrack as we were talking about earlier. You drove up to uh, Smoky Mountain Speedway there. Uh, well, I, I, there's a whole lot of good and there's some not so good. So tell us about your weekend. Yeah, I mean it's it's racing, right? It's uh, it doesn't always go great and it doesn't always go bad, and sometimes there's a little in between. Um, but you know we uh we. The funny thing is, is again, like we, we talked about this, uh, after the Bristol races, it's hard enough to do it period. It's really hard to just show up when you haven't <laughs> raced in three months and then just go hot lap, you know, like it's, it's tough. Uh, the cool part was I've, I've got a lot of laps around Smoky mountain. So, so that level of, of the level of dust I had to knock off was not near as thick as, as what I was dealing with, uh, at Bristol. Um, you know, so hot laps was all right. We we had a little bit of stuff we needed to change on the car. Uh, and Harold was all over that right off the gate. Um, I was sitting in the lineup shoot for qualifying, and I was like, okay, well, you know, hot laps, you weren't um, weren't a hundred quite a hundred percent. So, you know, you can either creep it up to ninety percent, see what happens, and take what you get, or you can just go. You've been here a bunch, and. Uh, like people laugh, but that's literally the conversation I'm having with myself <laughs> sitting in the shoot. And I said, you know what? Screw it. I, I said, we made the right, you know, we made, we made adjustments that we think are going to work. I know this racetrack. I've run fast here before. I'm just going to go for it. I'd rather go for it and mess up than, than creep up on it and, and have to come from the back of the heat. So I went for it and I still had to start near the back of the heat. <laughs> um, but, uh, it was just, uh, I just got into three a little bit maybe a touch too high. I just didn't get the rotation fast enough and bounced up into the, into the rough stuff and, and scraped the fence a little bit. Uh, and we still don't know for sure yet, but that eventually led to a a power steering issue that, uh, showed up about three laps into the heat. Um, but the heat race was, was great. Um, started six and I was third when we came off of turn two. So the car was better. I was, you know, firing on all cylinders. Um, and then, uh, we still, we made the show after a green white checker with no power steering. Um, my arms still hurt (laughs) from all that, but, uh, we just, they were trying to beat some weather. So we just, we couldn't get the car. We couldn't find the problem, uh, quick enough because it's something either in the rack or the servo, um, off the back of the rack. And that's, I mean, even if we'd have found it right away, there's no way we could change it fast enough. So, we just uh, went out there, did our four wide salute, and uh, I talked talked myself into staying out there for two laps, and was gonna 
putt around the bottom, but uh, decided to to just save the laps on the motor and stuff, and we we called it a night on uh, on lap three. So feature wasn't so good, but uh, the heat race, you know, again, like the cool part about it is is Harold and I have been working together so long, like we spent maybe five minutes talking about how bummed we were that the power steering broke. And the rest of the hour and a half, two hour conversation was all about the eight laps in the heat race. What did the car feel like? What did, what was the difference between that and qualifying? What would we, what should we have changed going into the feature? You know, had we run the whole thing, you know, like it, it it's amazing how, when you have that level of communication with somebody, how much you can get out of, out of almost nothing. Um, and that, that just, again, that's, that's what I love about working with Harold and, and having that kind of mentality all the time is it just, it's the bad stuff's going to happen, but the guys that are successful are the ones that take advantage of the good and the bad and, and learn something from it. That's right. It's, it's real easy at that point to load it up, throw it in the trailer and don't worry about it no more. Just yeah. The only hard thing it. was steering it. Yeah, yeah, that was probably tough <laughs> getting in there. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, I we, we hated that uh you know happened to you, and I think you could have had a good run there. But like you said, that's part of racing sometimes, unfortunately. So uh, so on to the next one, I guess they say. Yeah, exactly. And uh, the next one won't be near as much cleanups. So we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna be at Caraway on July third for the Smart Modified uh, race. Uh, so hopefully we can. I got to. Uh, my goal there is to keep my bat in it. right now I'm batting a thousand and a modified. So Fix I got to come, come right here to Florence and want it. So, uh, it's time right. to go win another one. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're going to try to, we're going to try to keep that momentum going. And, uh, it's, I love Caraway. I've been there a bunch in a, in a late model stock and a super done a bunch of truck testing there back in back when all that was allowed. Uh, so I'm, I'm really excited to, to go there in that modified. Cool, man. That, that's, that's going to be a good one. Ready to watch you uh, go turn some more laps there, and uh, ho- hopefully you'll have uh, another W under your belt for that. It sh- it'll be fun. That's, it's going to be tough. That, that place is uh, that place can be treacherous, um, but it's it's a lot of fun. Good deal. Well, I reckon after that one, hopefully we can have you on again. Talk about maybe talking about a win there. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, no, no power steering. So pro- those things probably be even harder to drive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't do that. Them tires are huge. And that, <laughs> They're way be tough. too wide. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not that proud. <laughs> no, no. I don't, I don't got to prove anything. <laughs> no, I hear you. you. You're gonna have to hit the gym a little bit more if you want to do that. Yeah, right. <laughs> I ain't kidding. Oh, good deal, buddy. Well, this has been awesome having you on here, and uh, we appreciate your time, man. And um, oh, I can't wait to have you back on here again. Yeah, yeah. Thank you guys for having me, and we will definitely talk soon. All right, buddy. Well, have a good one, and we'll be talking All with right. you. Thanks. You too. Hi, bye. Awesome to have our team SRI driver on here, Joey Colter, in the number two Longhorn there. Uh, back again, uh, becoming a a staple on our show now. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it sure is, man. He uh. He gives a, lot, a different perspective, and uh, it's pretty cool to have that too. And um, really cool to have him as a as a part time co host and a and a teammate essentially with SRI, man. Yeah. Well, speaking of SRI, guys, as always, as we say every week, SRI is your one stop shop for all things racing. So you need to go get you some performance parts from SRI. So anything to make you go fast. As Joey's got on his card and PFC brakes, go talk to Randy Keene over there and he can set you up with everything that you need from uh, calipers to to rotors to, you know, pads, obviously, to master cylinders, everything in between to make not yep. only your car go fast, but stop good also. Yeah, he sure will. And he'll come with you to your shop and he'll put it on for you. He'll hook it up, man. Just get in touch with them. That's one thing that SRI does, man. They take care of you. They don't just sell parts. They make sure you're uh, taken care of all the way through. So, um, yeah, whether it's performance parts or uh, supplies, don't forget. They got uh, SRI supplies there, all one big old building. Uh, go in there and get everything you need. For sure. Also, Stock Car Steel, don't forget them. You need some uh, new metal work for your ride, go check out Stock Car Steel and Aluminum, and uh, they'll hook you up. As always, Draco Springs, you can go on 
sriperformance.com and get all the PDF sheets for any spring you need and uh, go hit them up and tell them what you need and they'll have it. If they don't have it, they'll custom make it for you, but I'm pretty sure they have it. Oh, I'm sure they get it. <laughs> so uh, y'all go check them out there. And uh, at, 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 when you're online there at sriperformance.com, when you do fill up that cart, Make sure you put in your promo code C Bone T N S C is in Chicken B O N E one zero get ten percent off at checkout. So uh, moving on, moving on, moving on. We got some more people to hang out with this week. All right, ladies and gentlemen, on the phone now we got a buddy of ours. We actually got to hang out with, hang out with just a little while up in Bristol this year. Got to meet him for the first time, but uh. Have known him around the track for a long time, running motors for our buddy Earl Ramey. Mr. Jeremy Steele. Jeremy, what is going on, buddy? Oh, same old, same old. Working on a car. What y'all getting into? Ah, uh, just chilling out, you know. Talking to people. <laughs> I just realized something. I just realized something. Everybody we got three interviews on this show today. First one. So every everybody we're talking to, name starts with Jay. Hey, hey, it's the J Show. It's the J Show. Normally it's Derek. Normally we got a bunch of Derek's on here. Today we got everybody's name starts with J, so that's pretty cool. (laughs) Oh, what y'all getting into on the race car today? Really just getting a wash, get it in the shop. I got a bent shock, tear some stuff off of it, try to get it straightened out. I think the car, I mean, it's just off somewhere and got overheating problems. And we need to just step back and reset and try again, really. Is is that I I know when I race go karts and stuff and was that a is that kind of a thing that typically or, or seems to happen to almost everybody about mid year because I know it did with us it was like we ran 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 and all of a sudden about mid season we were just having you know little nagging issues and it's like all right so let's chill out a minute and and, and figure it out and let's then let's get going <laughs> yeah I mean that's this first year in in this car so I mean we kind of probably stepped out over our head a little bit trying to run all these big shows and. Started out good, won a race at uh, Cherokee, won a race at Modoc, and then we've been on the road hitting these big shows for the past three or four weeks now, and it's like, I guess, I don't know, stuff's getting skipped over a little bit, starting to starting to slide a little bit, and so we kind of got to step back and punt and get our uh, ducks back in a row, figure it out. Yeah, well, cool. All right, well, before we get too far in, last time, uh, last time we saw Jeremy, personally, um, I think he was beating Sterling in cornhole over there. Yeah, yeah. He, he, not only are you good at driving a late model, but you're pretty good at cornhole too. Or what? We we played uh, cornhole and whatever else the other game was. I don't even remember. What was that game on the that Earl's got that you do the? It's like cornhole poker that almost. Cornhole poker. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty fun. We had a pretty good time up there. Yeah, it was yeah. a good time. We we uh we had a little rain up there, so that passed the time pretty good for us. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I enjoyed that. It was fun. It was fun. I, I, I'll be glad. I mean, don't get me wrong. I want to get back to the racetrack and go hang out with you at the racetrack again. But, you know, some, some every now and then something like that is fun. So uh, get ready to do it again. But, uh, all right, Jeremy, since it is your first time on, on Chicken Bone Alley here, we want to go back uh, over your racing career a little bit here. We want to we want to know where you got your start at, how old you were when you started, all that fun stuff. So if you can uh, give us the history of uh, Jeremy Steele. That'd be wonderful. <laughs> Ten four. I mean, so if we go all the way back, it uh really started growing up. I mean, around the racetrack, dad raced all up and down, all up and down the road, running fast track, whatever. I mean, that was all all I grew up knowing or knowing. And uh so I guess I was it's two thousand ten, so I was eight and uh we finally decided I wanted to go racing and uh we got a go kart, started racing over at Southern Pride and uh some other just local tracks around here and started running good i think we won 20 something races like two years in a row the first two years and um so finally jerry mullis come along and put me on a ride for a little bit and rode for him and on and off and we had our own stuff and I mean, we done real good one uh some maxis nationals junior big dog at thanksgiving thunder oh, yeah. i mean plenty of we want we run all them big shows and won a lot of them let, let, so, I mean, let, let me stop you real fast. Let me tell you what happened one time to me at Thanksgiving Thunder down here in Carnesville, Georgia. I, um, it was really funny. <laughs> well, it wasn't funny at all, actually, but <laughs> it kind of was funny. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, we were there, two-day show, as that always was. Uh, the first night, 
it was really funny because me and my motor builder were sitting there. It was Bobby Gears, and we were sitting there. And this is the last. I love bull peanuts, and I was eating bull peanuts at the racetrack, and I didn't really care. People said a bad look, but I was like, I ruined number thirteen. I don't care. <laughs> you know, don't bother me. Uh, so I'm eating bull peanuts. Well, somebody comes out of turn four, and I don't know. You remember that track? How it had a concrete wall on the front stretch. Oh yeah. Yeah, I hated that thing. I don't know why. I just hated it. Well. Somebody come out of turn four and spun out right in front of the field, and somehow everybody missed them. They kept on going in there. I don't even think they ever threw a caution. And my motor builder looked at me. He's like, that's how you warm your tires up right there, and just picking picking around with me. <laughs> well, we went out and practiced the next morning. Track still probably a little damp. And uh, I come out of turn four, and guess what I did? I spun it out right in front of the field. Well, I backed up to that concrete wall. Everybody passed me. I went to take off. This little kid back there in the back come by wide open, and he was all over the track, and all of a sudden he hits me in the side while I am sitting still, and he is wide open. And my arm was sitting on the side, hit my elbow, broke my collarbone, so it was wonderful. <laughs> How was I, had about, <laughs> I had about the same deal down there. I didn't get hurt, but uh, we broke out a brand new Ultramax. First weekend, first weekend on it, go to Thanksgiving Thunder. And I was running mid-pack or so, and they stacked them up out of four right there down the front straight away. And somebody come across the track, and I T-boned them. And when I did, it turned over two or three times over in the tires. Brand new go-kart. <laughs> See, that's how mine was. I was on a brand – that weekend, that was the first time I had run. That's when – let's tell you how long ago it was and how old we are. This was the first ever year they came out with a Champions Edition Phantom chassis, and this was a Banshee. So I tell you how long ago it was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they didn't even have Champions Edition until this year. I think it was I don't know, probably two thousand. Oh, uh, so it's been a little while. But anyway, let's get back to you. I just thought that was a funny story to tell real fast. <laughs> so back to you. Yeah. After you went on to uh, uh or from from that there with uh riding Ultra Max and stuff uh, at Carnesville. Uh, where'd you go from there? That's what we raced. We raced go karts till I we sold our stuff in. 15 i think i was done racing i was i was tired of it burnt out on it i think i was gonna play basketball or something and uh you don't look like the basketball that, type i'm sorry that didn't last very long <laughs> and uh i mean i still i never stopped racing really i just kept i wrote we sold our stuff and i rode for some people and just mainly local stuff and um uh, dad was he went back car racing and so then it wasn't long you know a year year or so and i'm like i think i want to go car racing now and uh so we went, we went all the way to Illinois and got my first car, a shawl, and uh, run it for, run it for a year or two, run it for about two years. I think we won five races in it, and uh, then, well, actually, let me step back. When we first built, when we first started building that modified. We was over there, we was racing out of my grandpa's shop, putting it together, and uh, Chris Callahan, XL Grade and Waterproofing, which is the guy that owns my car and everything now. Right. He was racing side by sides and. He come over and checked it out, him and his dad, and he lives right up the road, and he was like, man, this is this is awesome. I got to have one of these. So he sold his side-by-side stuff and went and bought a modified, told us to come race out of his shop, and we raced out of his shop. Once once I got on my feet and we started winning races, he, uh, he kind of just said he wanted to step back and um, watch me race because he said he liked watching me win better than he liked him racing. <laughs> and, uh, so, I mean, we kind of just – We've been up from there. We had two nice lethal modified, sold one, bought this late model, and then uh, sold the other one, and now that's all we got It's one late model. And kind of our plan for the year was just to stay around the house, get our feet wet, learn, and uh, you know, we went and won at Cherokee, which we kind of got lucky, and then won at Modoc, and we was like, well, maybe, maybe we're a little better than we think we are. We can do this. And so we ran – we went – three weekends now out of town to Tennessee and West Virginia. And we, we've had speed, but not the speed we need. And she ain't had the luck that we needed really. And so now, like I said, we kind of just gone step back for maybe two weeks or so and uh, race at Cherokee and try to get our, try to get our program back where it needs to be before we run back out of town again. Well, that, that, that brings up, to me is, is it i know you go into a lot of these tracks you're talking about up in west virginia and tennessee and stuff are, are, you're going to a lot of those tracks for the first time right yeah like um last weekend or a couple of weeks ago we went to smoky mountain on friday i'd never seen the place 
we ran with on Saturday, and I raced modifieds there, but I hadn't been there in the late model. Right. I think we ran like ninth, and that American Crate All Star deal, they're tough. They oh yes. They uh, especially when you're up there in their neck of the woods on hard tires, like they run all the time. It's uh, it's hard to go up there and outrun them boys. So like Dylan Brown and Carson and them, man, they're doing something, going up there and winning them races. And um, then we went to 411. Never seen that place. This weekend we went to Princeton and Beckley, and I'd been to Princeton probably 10 years ago when Dad was racing, and Beckley I'd never seen. So I mean, yeah, these places, and it ain't they ain't like racing around the house. It's uh, it's totally different when you go up there. Well, well, and that's the thing too. I mean, it's they run the shows different for one thing a, a little bit, but but you're racing on completely different dirt every day almost. It's those are big changes in tracks because you're going from you know in the mountains to to down yeah, like, nowhere. <laughs> like, like the other week, we went to Smoky Mountain, and it was kind of red clay, but it was Tennessee red clay. And then we went to Whiff. It's from Virginia. It's brown. And then uh, over to 411 back in Tennessee. And it's kind of red, but that place, it gets – I mean, it's slick. looks like glass, and it'll be black as could be. I ain't never seen I ain't never seen nothing like that. Wow. And, uh, I mean, we've been to Alltech, and it's slick, but I think 411's definitely got it beat. Whew, if it if it beats all tech, something's <laughs> that's just crazy. <laughs> I'm on t- ice over there, but yeah. all, all I mean, tech, it, especially when you watch it on TV at all tech, man, it, it just looks like it, it just shiny black surface. That's it. That's what it looked like when we went to all tech at the end of last year for that big race. Uh, that's what it the second day when you walked out there in the morning and they hadn't turned the track over or anything yet, and it was like an asphalt track. I mean, it was wow. black top to bottom. That's crazy. But 411, it got the same way. It was like racing on ice. It was so slick. You almost couldn't stop. Like, they direct in front of the field. It probably wouldn't have been. It probably would have been pretty bad because, I mean, you hit the brakes, you're just in a slide. Dang. That's that's, hmm. that's insane. So, uh, first I want to ask, um, so I, I, I'm assuming, I, and I'm just assuming this, um, you you were doing the lethal deal over there. Is that when y'all uh, hooked up with uh, Earl Ramey? Because I know uh, they were, him and Derek were, doing the lethal stuff for a while is that how y'all kind of met really the no we really got hooked up with earl uh it was 2017 before i was racing dad was driving a modified for okay. a guy just local around here and we was racing at carolina one night and it started pulling the stud out of the head the valve spring studs and uh i mean earl we didn't know him from not you that would have walked up i mean he he didn't know who we were we, he didn't know or we didn't know who he was nothing and he come right over there in the middle of it Helped us get it uh, patched up with some JB Weld, really. And I mean, Dad raced that night, got it fixed enough to race. And uh, I mean, from kind of then, we just kind of grew with Earl and stuck with him because we didn't. Nobody else has a uh, has the at the track support like that that we get from him. So yeah, that's a big thing that I've seen also um, it, it, in our time spinning around, hanging out with Earl and stuff is. It, just just like at Bristol when we were there, and I saw this, at, I've seen this at Lakeview, I've seen this at in Portsmouth, Ohio, I've seen this everywhere. It doesn't matter whose motor you're running. If somebody says they have a problem, Earl wants to be there to help. That is just, that is Earl's yeah. calling in life, is to be there and help with this motor. Yeah. He don't care whose it is. He don't care if you're you're the fastest competitor competitor that they have on the track. He wants to help you because he wants it to be a good race. He don't He don't want to win it. Off a of, off of technicality like that. He wants to win it fair and square if he can. If not, he's going to be helping you out there. So uh, that, that's been one of the coolest things I've seen out of Earl is, uh, is, is you see all these, mo- you hear all these motor builders and you, you know, they're getting fed on Facebook or whatever, what everybody's doing. No, Earl's at the track most of the time. He knows what everybody's doing. That's how, and I can call him on the phone. It don't matter if it's Sunday at lunchtime. I can call him. He's going to answer if he's awake yet. Exactly. <laughs> if he's awake. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he's a uh, he's on he's more than just engine builder to us now. I mean, we go on vacation with him. We come up there and hung out at Bristol. I mean, he's almost like family to us now. It's a real good deal we got. Yeah. Yeah, he's a really good guy, and uh, I know he does. I mean, support wise with the motors. I mean, from what we talked with him, I mean, his uh. He takes care of his 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 guys for sure a lot, and I mean that's that's got to be a big thing for y'all, especially trying to go from one week to the next and traveling. That's that's a big that's a big important thing. Yeah, I mean it is like when I won at Modoc, and uh, I'd actually run second, and we tore the leader down on motor, so they knew they were wrong, and I guess they got more money than they know what to do with, so they back protested <laughs> us and told us if if they're gonna have to work, then we're gonna have to work too. So 
tore our motor down on uh, Sunday afternoon, and Earl had it back in the car and on the dyno on Thursday to, for us to go out of town that weekend. So, that's man, awesome. That's when you tell him, that's fine. I, I know a guy. <laughs> yes, <he is>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is awesome. Well, uh, speaking of that dyno, um, we hadn't talked with anybody that's actually used a dyno. So how well has that helped you in the car uh, trying to figure out getting any kind of horsepower you can get out of it to the rear tires? I mean, it's definitely, that's definitely a big deal, I feel like, because, I mean, any of your big guys, they're getting on a dyno somewhere, and they're finding that extra 10 horsepower, and 10 horsepower don't sound like a lot, but when you're talking about a $400 ice cream truck motor, that 10, or not $400, 400 horsepower uh, ice sure. cream truck motor, that 10 horsepower, it might mean something when you go to these crate races in the top 10s within the same half a tenth. That's right, exactly. That's right. So, I mean... That's uh, I think the first time we went up there, we found almost 12 horsepower between some different carburetors, um, wow. pulley set, fans. I mean, just some, just odd and end things, just bolt ons and try. Wow. So, I mean, definitely, I feel like that uh, that definitely helps our program being able to have access to that. Good deal. That's uh, you can't ask for much more than that <laughs> at <laughs> all. So uh, so going going back on your year this year, you know you you, you got couple wins under your belt um how do you assess you moving up to a 604 late model this year how do you assess your year so far i mean i feel like we uh we've probably done we knew we would do good but we've probably done a little bit better than we expected i mean um wesley page has been probably the biggest role in that helping us give me a good baseline to start on with shocks and he's almost like earl he's phone call away and uh, if I'm at the racetrack and he's not there, or if he is there, I can he'll come down there and talk to me or whatever. Because the way uh, the way these things are now with spring smashers and having all these different loads and everything, it's definitely a learning curve, and uh, it's a lot to wrap your brain around. That's kind of like Dad. He talks about you know in his day it was ride heights and change a spring here and maybe a turn here, and so he kind of just he kind of just lets me learn it and says you figure it out. There you go. There you go. What is the, um, you coming from modifies for years there. Uh, what I, I, we know it's a different animal, but what is the biggest difference to you from going from a modified to a, to a late model with the crate late model and versus the, them 602 mods, you really had to be up on the wheel and that modified you was on eight inch G sixties. Um, I mean, it just don't, it don't have the front suspension of a late model. So, I mean, it's a little bit more, lot or a lot less grip so you was a lot more up on the wheel and you didn't have nowhere near the rear grip so i mean you was a lot more throttle control but it really i think it helped because i mean we started with less grip now i'm in something that feels like it's glued to the racetrack and um it's the same it's the same understanding of a four link car and i mean everything like that so i feel like it done us real good to start in that modified and transfer over because i mean we didn't just jump straight into the late model and have no idea of nothing about a four link car and the right rear loads on the modified similar to how all your loads work on the late model so i had a little tiny teeny tiny understanding of how loads work when we got over in this stuff I got you. And from there it was kind of just learning what what each load does at each number how that affects the car which i'm still learning every single day really and you will continue to the rest of and your I driving will career. As long as we race, I'll learn. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. And, and if you ever stop, then, well, probably time to hang it up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, man, I've always thought it's, uh, and me and Sterling have talked about this on here many times, I always see it as it's got to be an advantage to come from a modified like that because, like you said, running on them eight-inch tires to, you know, how you were in the modified to now running on a lot more tire, you've got to know, you just have to, you got to understand throttle control a whole lot better. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's definitely different cause you got a lot better suspension. You got a lot better just overall, um, your frame and everything on the front. You don't have a stock front clip no more. So you got a lot more grip through there. You got double the tire and it's half as soft. So, I mean, like when I first got in this thing, I couldn't get it to turn because it just felt so glued to the racetrack that I mean, I felt like I had so much rear grip I couldn't make it turn. Wow! <laughs> just throw it in there, throw it in there. <laughs> that's that's what I've learned. We're getting there. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a different animal. Oh yeah, yeah, I bet so, man. Well, you said uh, next couple things you got coming up is gonna be closer to home. 
Yeah, we uh we originally planned to go to 411 this weekend because they got a big 10,000 something to win up there, and we went the other week and I enjoyed that place, but five hours or whatever it is from the house is a long ride to go figure out uh, if it's gonna run hot or not again. So yeah. I think we're gonna run Cherokee the next two weekends, and then American Crate All Star comes to Charlotte in July. We'll run that, and then probably if we got our stuff back together by then, which I'm sure we will or hope we will, we'll probably venture back out some and go hit some of those big american crate all-star races again there you go well we will definitely see you in uh charlotte because we are going to yep. be there for the sizzler so yep that should be a pretty good show there i think it will i'd like to see good. how those i think all crate lake models around here need to be on 1600s on at least on the rears or not all the way around there you go and uh that'll that'll be a good show what those tires do down here on the red dirt like we have it cherokee and stuff like that especially on uh, uh, on at charlotte because I, I know it's red dirt and stuff but man that track just seems different than the rest of yeah they there. that and they put dirt on it right there before the world short track deal at the end of last year and it was it was really dirt like we got around here powdery red dirt right to me it wasn't as good but maybe maybe by now they'll have it figured out and they'll uh have it good for this year maybe so because it was a little bit dusty <laughs> a little <laughs> bit dusty got rough and dusty up there yeah it was, it was a little rough too well cool man well who all you want to thank that's on your car and uh and that's helping you really really the biggest one is uh chris callahan with exo grading and waterproof and he uh he owns this whole deal and pays for it and it's pretty much just my job to drive it and work on it um which is awesome to have not many people get that opportunity um wp shocks and west longhorn by wesley page he he gives me a good baseline and keeps me up to date and he teaches me all that load stuff i'm trying to learn and because i don't think without him i'd really we'd be a whole lot behind in the learning curve because i don't know where we would have started um fk rod ends uh carolina fresh farms hooker harness earl ramey profab headers level cut lawn and landscapes godfrey builders um I got a good list of guys. Intense graphics keeps the car looking good, and also art. Um, I mean, we got a good group of guys behind us that keep us up front. So hopefully, we can continue to do it. Oh, I believe you can. I think it's going to happen. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> I see nothing but good things coming out of uh, y'all's camp over there. So, uh, well, man, yeah, this we, is. Go no, go ahead. We try and we work hard. Definitely, that's uh, I think even if. Even when you can't out money them, you still got to outwork them. Yeah, uh, you got to do that regardless. So uh, if you ain't putting in the work, it don't matter how much money's there. <laughs> so, uh, well, good deal, man. Well, we appreciate you coming on and hanging out with us this week, and uh, hopefully uh, here soon we're gonna have you back on again. Uh, we, we need to get you back on. We've been telling. I know. I think we set it up at Bristol, and we we told Earl on how many times, and finally just. I was like, all right, let's get Jeremy on here. So uh been meaning to get you on here before now and it just never worked out. So uh hopefully we have you back on here real soon talking about some wins here coming up. Yeah, I hope so too. I appreciate y'all having me. I know Earl texted me today and said, You wanna be on a podcast? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah, that's cool. Well, good deal, buddy. Well, we uh we appreciate it and uh wish you best of luck in figuring out what's going on with the car and uh hopefully you won't even need to worry about that just go out there and kick their tail over to cherokee yep 10-4 i appreciate y'all having me all yeah, right man. buddy well have a good one and we'll be talking with you soon all right thank you all right appreciate jeremy Steele coming on here and hanging out with us driver that number that orange number 22 longhorn there i think it's orange i mean ask him is he a clemson fan or something Nah, he ain't, nah, he just likes he's too, orange. He's too good to be a Clemson fan. Yeah, he just likes orange. <laughs> you drinking that orange cup over there. You it wasn't my man. fault. Oh, that's just all that was in your cabinet. Oh, all right. Uh, Other than that, there was a chicken bone alley cup. That, <laughs> it's, not, it's, not, it's not the best chicken bone alley cup ever made. No, no, it's not. I it's the only chicken bone alley cup ever made, but it ain't the best one. <laughs> we didn't make it. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> oh, who person made it isn't listening. <laughs> It's okay if they are. You can do better. It's all right. You can always <laughs> it was do a good better. practice run. I it have done good... things bad, and obviously they have too. So it's all right. <laughs> oh, that's bad. All right. Well, let's get out of that subject. Yeah. Um. Well, we said we had some more drivers 
names start with J. And well, I'm gonna tell you what, man, <laughs> Earl, Earl, Earl Remy is the man, bro. We done said it. He's the man in building race motors. He's the man hooking us up too, bro. I'm telling you. We, we ask him. All we, we say is, "Hey, man, you got any drivers?" You, yep. He sent and, me a list today. A list. <laughs> He's like, he sent me a picture of a list that he wrote out this morning. I guess. Twelve different people who won with Hilton Motors this weekend. Yeah. He's like, you want to get the winners? I said, well, give us a couple. Yeah. <laughs> give us a couple. Or, or we can't talk to all of them at one time. It'll I'm sorry. Twelve-hour episode here. Uh, we, I mean, we, we can make the Earl Ramey episode and just, just talk to everybody. It. It'll be a day-long episode. I'm all for it. <laughs> talk to all your winners from this weekend because they all win. We know that. <laughs> if if we do it every weekend, that's all it'll be because that's all that ever wins, bro. You look at it. I know. 12, 15 Earl Ramey racing engines win every week. Well, guess what? This one coming up here uh, won this week. All right, ladies and gentlemen, on the line now, another Earl Ramey racing engine driver, J Mac. Jameson McBride, what's going on, man? You doing all right there? Yeah. How y'all doing? Man, we ain't going to complain. If I was doing Living any better, a dream, man. If I was doing any better, I'd sit on my hands, keep from clapping. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've been wondering, it's another Monday. We'll go with that. <laughs> yeah. I hear you. Well, man, you ought to be having a good Monday. You are coming off a, uh, a good weekend. Yeah, we had a pretty good weekend this weekend. That's, uh, that's awesome, man. That's great to hear. And uh, we love hearing it. But before we get into much of that, we want to, uh, as as we just did with uh, Jeremy Steele on here too, we want to uh, go back with you on uh, where you got your start in racing and kind of kind of go back. Well, my my daddy raced, my grandpa, my mama she raced. I don't know. It run through the family, and uh, back in 2013, I started running go karts. And we'd run around here, and then, uh, I mean, we had, we'd run around here, raced, and I won, see, won like 30 races, close to 30, from 25 to 30 races running go-karts, and then, then one day, my pop, my poppy had a race car sitting out back, and he gave it to me, which is a, is a good race car, and, uh, that's where my, 602 started out from there in 2018 and just went from there. There you go. What kind? What kind of a uh, kind of go karts do you ride? Uh, I run a Junior Champ, run a Phantom, racing chassis. There we go. Finally, I finally get to talk to somebody else on there. Everybody I've talked to, nobody ran a Phantom racing chassis. I ran Phantom for from '98 to God knows when. <laughs> been a long time <laughs> but nobody <laughs> ran phantom i don't know what the deal was uh, all our phantom guys was w- don't get on here so, no uh, it's good I run a shadow so yeah sterling was a shadow guy i run champ buggies though so hey I, we, we was right here together a few years different oh, probably yeah. but we was right here together yeah yeah different. how old are you uh turn i'm 15 <sighs> wow man dude you, I, man i wish i i wish i could say i was 15 and doing what you're doing now boy you, you was uh definitely uh Definitely privileged to be where you're at right now, man. You're doing very well at it. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> well, good deal. That's uh, it's awesome to hear. Well, going into uh, into this year a little bit, man. Uh, well, even back father, but this we'll talk about this year, I guess. Uh, man, you've had some success this year. Let, let's. I, I know uh, that Earl Ramey Racing Engine been treating you right there, and and obviously a lot of other things to go with it, but uh. You've had a good year. Yeah, we we started off a little slow trying different things, but uh, kind of went back to what we know and what we used to run, and it lit it back up. I guess <laughs> that's all you can ask for. Sometimes you sometimes you gotta uh, you know, just try to try to go back to the old trusty setup sometime, and uh, and it'll work out for you a whole lot sometimes, and uh. But yeah. you, we know you've been running up there. At, uh, you've been running three eleven mostly. Yeah, that's where we run mostly this this year. But uh, we run one race at Elk, and okay. that's it. How'd that work out for you at Elk? Uh, it was actually my first first super late model race. We run and uh, I qualified thirteenth after breaking the dry shaft in practice, and then finished eighth. So it went. It was pretty good for my first time. That ain't bad. 
racetrack was a little rough, and I don't know. I thought it did pretty good. That ain't bad at all. That ain't bad at all. That's a pretty good night. If that if 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 eight is a bad night, then you you doing pretty good. So uh, we know you got a couple win or a few wins over there at uh, three eleven this year. Man, let's just go back to this past weekend. Tell us about your race over there. Well, we, we started off pretty good. The racetrack was good and hooked up pretty good. We uh we sec we we were second fastest in practice and then qualified on pole in the race. Made a few made a few changes. Not many though, and we pulled it off. I mean There you go. It was it was pretty I mean I had to drive it pretty good. Cause it, it started slicking up a little bit at the end, but I mean, I had fun doing it, so it was, I liked it. <laughs> it's, it's always fun when you're running out front, ain't it? <laughs> oh yeah, always. <laughs> oh yeah, I bet so. Well, uh, tell us a little bit about how you uh, you got hooked up with our buddy uh, Earl Ramey, with Earl Ramey Racing Engines. How how'd you hook up with him? Well, it was... My first time, my first race I ever won in the 602 back in 2018. He was down there and he was down there with some of his buddies and he talked to, uh, this boy and helps us on a race car and talked to my daddy and said, you know, if you ever needed a motor fixed, we'll, you know, we'll help you out fix it. Going through or whatever. And so last, not last year, in 2019, we got us a 604 motor. And we, we sent it, we sent it, well, Earl, Earl was the one that built it in 2019, but we, we didn't ever run racing until last year. That's whenever we started running 604s, and we got Earl to do our 602 motor, and it was good, and I don't know, he built some real good, real good motors. I'm telling you, he really does. Tell us the, uh, what, what you feel difference-wise I know you said you ran some 602 stuff, then moving up to the 604. How 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 different has that been? Oh, uh, it's it's more. I mean, it's it's it. You can tell it's you have to drive it. I mean, you can you drive it about the same, but you just it's it's real tight competition. Everybody's real close, and you got good competition <laughs> wherever you go. Oh yeah, I bet so. I bet so. That's always been a cool class to me uh well either one of the crate classes have always been awesome to me just because it's real tight competition but 604 especially those are those seem seem fun and seem to have a little bit more speed so they uh you know turn around there a little bit faster and so they're they're real fun to watch and uh we know you're we 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 know our buddies over there also at uh pro fab hitters they got to sit on your car there and uh that probably probably helping that motor scream a little bit oh yeah Andrew and them, they build some real good headers, and they if I if he was gonna buy a set of cray headers or any headers, I'd get sure get pro fabs. Well, that, that's always been well. I, I've noticed that over the last you know year or so that we've hooked up with Earl and and, and Andrew over there. Um, they do a lot of testing. You know, pro fab does a lot of testing with Earl Ramey. So, uh, so, so why not just go straight for the best? That's and, and oh, that's yeah. what you've done. Yeah. So uh, we know you're driving the uh, uh, an Icon, right? Yeah, that's it. That's it. Very right. What, what, what you think about the car? Obviously, I uh, like it pretty good. I think. <laughs> oh yeah, I like, I like, uh, I like them good. Uh, Barry and Lance, them always nice to me and nice to us. And I mean, they, they, I like them all good, as far as the family and everything, but. They built some real good race cars, and they help us out too. That's good, Neil. I, they, uh, I've, I've, I've known some guys driving them, and they seem like good people, and and it's good stuff. Good stuff. They're they're coming back. It, it was a uh, Barry Wright was kind of over the mid two thousand teens. Seemed seemed a little down there for a little while, but uh, here over the last couple of years, that they've really come back on the scene, and that's that's been a real good car out there, and a lot of uh. Stiff competition driving them very right chassis. So, uh, oh yeah. So it's it's good to see some more out on the track now. Well, good deal, man. Well, uh, who all uh on your car? You want to thank and uh, who all helps you out? 
uh, first of all, I want to thank God, uh, my family, my daddy, my mama, my sister, uh, my papa, Papa Gary, Gary Mabe, my papa Bob, my granny, Brenda, uh, Grandma and Tom, and my crew. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it without them. Couldn't have my daddy, uh, Chuck, Brandon, Dwayne, Kimmy, Scott, and Tracy and Justin. Then Earl Remy Racing Engines, Folks Record Service and Hazmat, Laughlin Concrete, Big Daddy's Concrete Finishing, McCone Logging, Rogers Farms, Bullbagger Customs, CTC Realty, Amanda Tucker, May Brother Service, Tim's Cabinet Shop, Bay Wright Race Cars, uh, Barry, Judy, Lance, Ashley, and all of them, uh, Wilson's Automotive, Terry Flincham, Butler Built, with Chris Fer- Chris Ferguson, he helps he helps you. Oh yeah. If you ever need to see, that's who you need to go to. That's it. Uh Randy's Custom Leonard, Karen Cuts and Curls, ML Performance, Gan Race Car and Parts, Willie's Carburetors, Pro Fabrica- Pro Fabrication Headers, Collins Construction, L Max Bakery, Bakery, David and Glenda Pruitt, Smith Chapel Baptist Church and just all my family and friends and Thank God we get to go do what we love. There you go, Manny. Because uh, I like what you said there. First of all, thank God because uh, without him, we ain't got none of this and uh, wouldn't be that's anywhere. It. So uh, that's that's awesome, Manny. I hope you always. I know you will. I always remember that. But uh, I, I just want. I got one question, real quick. Did What's you that? did Did you write all that down? Do what? Did Did you write all that down, or did you just remember that off the top of your head? All them sponsors. No, I couldn't remember all that. <laughs> I never wrote down. I don't blame you because I couldn't remember it either. God will tell you what. That's a list of them there, and that is awesome to see so many people helping a young racer come up through the through the ranks there. And you see what that help does is put them up front every week and uh, winning. That's uh, that's 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 the cool part about it. I ain't gonna say that's what it's all about because it's all about going out there having a good time, especially. When you're doing it with your family, and I feel like you're doing it right, buddy. Yeah, thank you. Well, good deal, man. Well, this has been fun, and uh, hopefully we'll have you on again soon here talking about some more wins. What's uh, what's coming up next for you? Uh, I think we're going to go back to 311 this weekend. Then we might uh, go run a Super, maybe, at Livonia and Sonoma, but it's still on my mind. I don't know yet. I, I I seen you got a got in a super a couple times this year, or has it been a couple times? Yeah, we run we run it twice and practiced a few times. Uh, what you think about it? I like it for sure. I bet so. It's, it's, re, it's real fun. I, I bet that's a. It, it, can you can you tell a big old difference going from the six oh four to the super? Oh yeah, you gotta you gotta be on the you gotta be on top of it in six oh fours, but. Whenever it's super, you got to really be on be on top of it for sure. For sure, man. Well, good deal. Well, we uh, wish you the best of luck, and like I said, hopefully we'll have you back on here soon talking about some more wins. And uh, but we appreciate your time, and uh, we'll be talking with you soon, buddy. All right, thank y'all. God bless you. Thank you, you too, buddy. There was your driver number two fifteen, old J Mac Jameson McBride in the. Very right. Icon. Another uh, Earl Ramey racing engine driver. Yes, sir. Up and coming driver. 15 years old, man. I thought he was older. He's not. He's, it makes me sad now. It does. It makes, <laughs> it makes me, me really sad. sad but it makes me sad like, and I feel old now. Well, I've already felt old, but he really, it really makes me sad. I was still running... Uh, I was still running champ buggy. Running <laughs> my mouth. That's what I was running. <laughs> I was running hey, 15. great. Hey. <laughs> But it's only got his head on right there, man, and uh, got some good people around him and definitely some good race motors there in them cars. And I uh, look forward to seeing what he can do uh, in the future. For sure. And uh, all those interviews there with uh, Jeremy Steele and J-Mac there, we want to thank our buddy uh, Earl Ramey for sure for uh, for for being our uh, second PR person. Our first one, I guess, is Randy Keene. So. <laughs> yeah. They definitely look out for us for sure, they, and uh, they don't know, they don't know that they're 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 Chickabone Alley's PR, but you know, yeah, <laughs> it, it's it's a thing. It's a thing. It's a thing. thing. Yeah, we do appreciate it for sure. We'll lean on them guys uh, a lot, and uh, they help us out 
Um, so uh, I guess next week uh, the PR guys showcased will be Mr. Randy King. So we'll see what happens there. That's but, right. We have some uh, looking to have some SRI drivers on next week. Yep. So that'd be really Sound cool for sure. So that was cool. Well, that's all the interviews we got for this week, everybody. Just you got to listen to us the rest of the time. I yeah. Know y'all don't. No, they'll turn it off now. Yeah, it's done now. <laughs> turn it off. <laughs> Just turn it off. We're done with it. We got all the interviews out of the way. We're done. There. Yeah. No. Nah. Uh, anyway, so there was a uh, there was some more racing that we've got. we kind of we kind of talked about a little bit of it. Um, with Joey Colter there at the first. Um, well, well, let's start. Uh, let's start. I guess we'll start with Friday night because uh, Truck Series NASCAR in general back at nashville super speedway um i still don't think i'm a fan i don't well i'm gonna back it up a second if you're gonna call it a super speedway i like it but it's not a super speedway speedway. it's pretty much the same size as darlington Mm -hmm. pretty much the same size and if every super speedway was that much off throttle time i would love it i love super speedway more of them but yeah I know, it's the whole arrow deal was kind of made it sucky. Yeah. It did, but I like the all throttle time. It really showcases driver talent, I think, more than just. I mean, go to Charlotte now. What do you do? Flat foot. Flat foot, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, the whole time. I agree. So I like that. I'm not disagreeing with that. I'm not disagreeing with that at all. I'm just. I guess this is one thing, and, and, and surprisingly, me and Dale Hart Jr. don't agree about a lot. I don't always agree with him. Um, I, I I like him. Don't get me wrong. I just some of his views on things I don't always agree with. But this is one view that I do agree with. Is I think they it was. I'm glad to see them back in Nashville. I just think they went to the wrong track. Oh, I agree with you. I would love the the, the uh, short track there for the sure. Fairgrounds. Yeah, but you know, I guess that's I don't know. Still in the works, I think. I think it's a deal. It is, but I don't know what it'd ever be. I mean, it's, it's right up in town, I guess, and all that. They There's so much political they whine bull about going on about it. Whatever. So I don't know, you know, but um, but good to see him nonetheless. Good to see him back in uh, in Nashville. That was really cool. Um, they did a lot to that facility to get it where it is. Yeah, they they really did because I mean they hadn't used that track in ten years. Yeah, it's, and, it's been uh, a while. So. It was cool to see. I mean, and I I do like the fact that it is a uh, well, it's not a mile and a half. What whatever size it is, it, one point three three. Yeah, three. I think it's a cookie cutter track, is what I call it, D shaped oval. But the one thing I do like about it is it is all concrete, so that does make it a little different. It does, but it didn't really produce much different racing, in my opinion. Now. In saying that, uh, watching the truck race Friday night, um, it was pretty interesting. Uh, the big players that typically are up there up front were not up front. John Hunter not there. Um, uh, it's just, I don't know, Grand Infinger got up there towards the end, and he was about one of the typical guys you'd see up there. And... I mean, but he hadn't been as typical this year being up there. Mm. Um, Ty Gillan ended up coming up finishing second, so that was – I've been one of the more typical ones, I guess you'd say. But the Johnny Salters, the – Didn't uh, – Everybody else, no. Did William Byron run that race? Well, he ran a few laps. Oh, really? Blue motor. Dang. <laughs> well, I was wondering where he finished because I hadn't I – didn't, I did not watch that race, but – uh Kind of wondering where he was at. I thought he was in it. Yeah, he ran a few laps. He didn't make it very far. What that guy and blew up. Um, but what was what was cool in my opinion to see was a uh, Ryan Priest come up and won the race driving the car that or truck that Kevin Hart drives, right? Uh, yeah, that seventeen truck that Harvick drove. Where did he drive it at? Did he drive Darlington? Where was it? I believe it was Darlington. Or no, no, and it was um Bristol. Wasn't it? Yeah. He tried yeah. to drive on the dirt at Bristol. Yeah, he did. Yeah. So he drove that 17 truck there. Ryan Priest run, run it. Um, that's a DGR truck. And uh, what was really funny is <laughs> uh, Todd Gilliland's crew chief got kicked out. 
or they they failed inspection, lost crew chief. Todd Gilliland actually drives for Front Row Motorsports. There also is DGR trucks out there, which is David Gilliland Racing. Well, since Todd's crew chief got kicked out, guess who went to be a crew chief? David Gilliland. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, I'll be done. So that was pretty cool. He was fast there at the end, but the problem was with that track, you could pass, but you couldn't really pass on the bottom. If you did, you had to somehow pull off like a slide job almost Um, because you had to stop the person's momentum on top because if they got to your outside, then all they had to do was pin you down off the corner a little bit and you got super loose. And that was just how all the passes happened at the track. So I wasn't very impressed by that. It's just, it was whoever could get to the, you, you wanted to be on the bottom is was the preferred line, but you wanted to be able to wash all the way out. If somebody got to your outside, they killed your momentum off the corner. And like I said, it got you loose. And right. it just, to be, you know, not a mile and a half track, it's almost a mile and a half, but not a mile and a half. Way too much aero dependency, even in trucks. Yeah. I mean, I, I noticed that in the cup race big time. I mean, we saw a lot of guys get loose in that race and never touched them. Um, I don't know. It's hard to say. I mean, you can't see air. Okay. You cannot, of course. We can't. I guess Dale Earnhardt could, but <laughs> what is it? But, but, but we could. We can't. Um, but it's, it is. It's, it's very, it's very strange. It's hard to understand that. And it's hard for somebody watching on TV to understand that, I guess. But, um, but yeah, it does, it does kind of hurt the racing for sure. When, when, you know, that's plays the turning point part of the race is, is, is just arrow. It's, it's all that. Um, whoever gets out front, is kind of the, kind of just sets the pace and they're gone kind of deal. And, um, restarts is pretty much the whole race so uh yeah that's that's kind of a bad thing but um i like the off the the off lot of time there um any track i think you can run off throttle at it makes a big difference uh makes for a better race um but it i guess it was i guess it was too big of a track and not enough off throttle time i guess i don't know but it didn't uh it didn't play an effect enough. No, no, not 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 for my liking. Uh, moving on to the Xfinity Series ra- race, though, I will say uh, there was a lot of wrecks in it for some reason. Um, but which I think there's cars are just looser to begin with. That's what they have seemed like all year, especially like at Darlington when we saw them, they were just super loose. So I think that's kind of the deal going on. Um, Justin Allgaier and uh. And Kyle Busch actually put on a pretty good race there for a while, back and forth on some restarts. And it was, Kyle Busch didn't just run away with it. We'll put it that way. So I was, I mean, he got his 100th win, looked good doing it. But it wasn't just a, it wasn't necessarily in Kyle Busch dominating fashion. He had to race for it hard. Well, man, I tell you what, dude, I, Justin's good. I, I like Justin a lot. Um, it always seems like Justin comes up just a touch short, always, for whatever reason. I don't know why that is. But uh but yeah, he was strong. That was really good to see that. And um and like you said, and like we said earlier, uh good to see Kyle get his hundredth win in the Xfinity series. That's a pretty major deal. Uh, I don't know if we'll see anybody else do that. No, I don't think so. Not that na- not now, not with the unless they just were crazy dominant in the in the uh, Xfinity scene and decided not to move up to Cup, but I don't see that happening nowadays. Nah. Kyle, just like you were talking about earlier, is, you know, Kyle, the first, so far, I guess you say two-thirds of Kyle's career, he was able to run as many truck races and, right. and Xfinity races as he wanted to, and he got a lot of those wins in, um, which is, don't, don't, take that wrong because it is insanely impressive to me because Mark Martin also, just like you said earlier, he was able to run as many as he wanted and Kyle has 
killed him. Oh yes, and uh, <laughs> and, 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 you know all the records in Xfinity. He's killed records. I mean, just demolished them. Every record in Xfinity, I'm pretty sure, is owned by Kyle Busch. Yeah, oh yeah. And so, rightfully so. I mean, I will give respect where respect is due. And he said one time that he was the if they want to say he was king of the minor leagues, he would wear that crown proudly. And because I'm gonna tell you what, he's figured out how to drive those cars under whichever package they have put on them. Yeah, but way better than anybody else. So yeah, he sure has. So hats off to Kyle Busch for 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 winning. 100 races <laughs> and one time he said you know after he won 100 he was gonna retire from xfinity series somebody asked him that the other night he was like nah i don't think so <laughs> i got i got five races this year with planned out with gibbs he said one of these days i might just retire from cup and come back and run these full time again <laughs> boy you know what happened then <laughs> Ooh, i hate it for the xfinity uh Ooh. rest of that uh feel for sure there'll be a record set of wins in one year yeah no doubt in the three races he has won run this year he's won all three so yeah yeah he's pretty dominant with that and in the truck too and uh so that's pretty cool to see that but um, the only person he's been outrun by in the truck this year has been his own truck <laughs> yeah which i guess you can't be mad at that really i guess that's a good thing no. if you're gonna get out run get out run by your own stuff yeah that's, that's what i'd like to see but so uh um i don't know it's Decent race. Kind of same thing, though. It's kind of whoever got the outside. Um, Justin Allgaier, talking about him, I felt like there over the last couple of restarts, if he'd have been a little more aggressive, as we always have said about Justin Allgaier, he probably could have stayed on Kyle Busch's door. And But but he wanted to race clean, and I understand that. I get it, and I get it. He is a clean driver. Clean, clean, clean driver. He is another Mark Martin to me. He is, but I think that's, why, I think that's what's kept him... In an Xfinity car, I, th I really I do. do. Um, I think his talent's there, no doubt. I really do. I just think that 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 extra aggressiveness is needed to nowadays, uh, to especially when, yeah. when he started. No, you didn't need it. Um, you could pass cars in, right? Now you can't pass nobody, and everybody's way of passing, unfortunately, is you got to <clears throat> do something pretty aggressive to pass them, whether that be move them. Or pin them down or something like that. And he don't want to race like that. He wants to pass them clean. And I understand that. I, I get it. I get it. That's how I want to be too. But it's not going to work anymore. No, it's not. It really isn't. And, you know, we've seen that throughout this whole package deal that they're running now. And um, there's so many chances taken on restarts that you see um, that you got to do. You've got to get that track position off the restart. Yeah, for sure. And that's it's kind of hurting him a lot. But um, he did that at Darlington with his yeah, teammate. Yeah, so. <laughs> with his teammate. He jumped up there and took it from him. I was like, all right. So, uh, I don't know. I guess he's okay with teammates, but he ain't okay doing other people. I don't know. It's kind of backwards, in my opinion. But Yeah. Well, speaking um, of his teammate, though, uh, Josh Berry, last race in, in the junior motorsports car, as we know of this year, uh, fifth place finish. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I tell you what, dude, he's – I really think they got him something lined up um, because they kind of quit. Because, you know, earlier on, we saw a lot of that stuff. With, you know, Kelly and all them just keep on pushing, you know, sponsorship for Josh, sponsorship for Josh. You ain't seen that lately. Nah. So I kind of think somebody must have jumped on. Somebody's, you know, something's lined up. Well, and not noticed yet. Well, this is what I think. This is, I'm just, I have no knowledge, just speculation. We seen GMS is going to be moving or opening a cup team. I know they said moving into the cup series. I don't know if that means they're doing away with truck series team. I doubt um, they have X. They got Xfinity cars too, or they ain't not running Xfinity anymore. I honestly cannot remember. I don't think they do. Anyway, um, they are moving because obviously uh, there's a lot of news to talk about. Actually, a bunch of teams, you know, a bunch of stuff moving up to Xfinity. I mean, up to cup because of the new car. Uh, the business model is going to be a lot better, obviously. All right, GMS moving up there. We obviously know GMS is closely affiliated with Hendrick. I feel like, I don't know why, I'm just saying, I, I, I feel like maybe Bass Pro Shop, Johnny Morris and them might move up with, with, um, 
Noah, maybe over to GMS. I don't know, man. I, maybe so. I know what you said about it. I, I, you don't think he's ready, and I don't either. I don't necessarily either. But why not? He's going to be kind of on the same playing field as everybody else. Everybody's going to be on the same playing field next year. New car, brand new car. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Brand new I motor, just, brand new everything. I don't, I don't think it's anything to do with talent. I don't think it's anything to do with uh, equipment. I just think it's everything to do with maturity. Maturity. <laughs> I do too. I agree with you. And I don't think he's ready for that from that perspective. Um, I like Noah. I really do. I, I, I do. But I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't think he's got that mindset yet to, to be able to go run it. Dude, it takes, I'd hate to know. I'd love to ask a Kyle Larson or a Chase Elliott what it takes mindset wise to, Keep your head in the game throughout that race. I don't know, man. It's it's major. I mean, I think that's what's hurting Kyle Busch in the Cup Series right now. Mm-hmm. His mindset is is his maturity level in the car at certain times. You know, he lets certain things get the best of him throughout the race. He's emotional, and I mean, and there's nothing wrong with that. But you got to be able to channel that, hone it in a little. You you got to. I mean, that's dude. It is so. That's a long race. Five, uh, four, well, yesterday was 400 miles, but, I mean, you got a lot of four, 500-mile races. That's a long it race. It is. But, well, I mean, when you're trying your best to – when you're trying to, to make a half a tenth better a lap, it don't take much at all to change your mindset to lose two tenths a lap. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm just it, – it's just – it's so much, and it's so much of a focus – to hit your marks every lap and back that corner up just a little bit more every lap for, for to to consider for tire wear or to consider for aero situations or you know there's so much stuff to think about that you know I don't know that he's ready for that I don't know that he is either but I I don't think that's part of the equation anymore it may not be I I feel like it's just is well, the money there yeah all right well you can drive the car yeah and maybe so you know I don't know I, I if he does, I, I wish him the best, and I'd like to see him do well for sure. But, uh, you know, regardless what happens with Noah, um, I feel sure Josh will be driving full-time in a junior motorsports car. Now. Well, well, yeah. And that, that's what I was getting at is just I think there's going to be somebody. It could be Allgaier moving back to the Cup Series. It could happen. It could. It could happen. Uh, they, there's some, you know, there might, GMS may want somebody with some experience, and he's got plenty of experience. To go in the car and, you know, what do we need to do for 500 miles for this car? And even though it's a new car, there's still certain things that's, you know, you right. used to run in 250, 300 miles. And so you need somebody with some experience and know how there. So I could see something like that. I just, I just, I don't know. I feel, I feel like the GMS, the Junior Rogers Force GMS Hendrick affiliation is going to have a role to play. Well, there's there's and Josh getting back in. Oh yeah, no, full time, sure, no doubt. But the the other thing of the equation is, and I don't like it, but the other thing is is the charter deal. Well, there's no charter deal in Xfinity. No, in the Cup Series. But the Cup Series, there you is. got you got all these teams that's going to be moving up, mm-hmm. and along with GMS, you also have got um, what's the other guy, the other team that's going to move up? Oh lordy, I just forgot. Um, AJ Allmendinger's team. Yeah, uh, Colleague. Colleague Racing. Colleague Racing. They're going to move up and have a cup team. Yeah, they just bought two charters from Spire. Spire had three charters. Spire's going to be using one for Corey. They had talked about expanding after this year. Well, apparently that hadn't worked out. So they leased one charter out to uh, um, they did the track house. Yep. This year, and I'm not sure who they leased the other one out to. But anyway, you can only lease them out one year, and then you got to right. either use them or sell them, right? Um, or give them away. So next year, they sold two of theirs to Colleague. So Colleague will have two chartered cars. So you got Colleague, you got GMS. There was talks of Junior having a Cup team. I don't know that it would happen, but you know, whatever you do, you, you know, <laughs> the charters are going to run out. Oh yeah, they're definitely going to run out. Um, and there's some teams making talk of just trying to run it without a charter. It's going to be hard, though, when you got, say, say they're only going to run 36 cars like they're doing now. You got 40, 42 teams showing up every week. 
those 30, what is it, 32? Yeah, I think, I think it's how they got set up now. 32 cars, charter cars, are going to make it 30 or 32, whatever it is. So you're going to have, say, 10 cars fighting over four spots. Well, I this is my thought about it. All right. You know, they're making the Cup Series more affordable to run. More affordable to operate, more affordable to own a cup car. It's going to be cheaper than the Xfinity Series. Right. <laughs> so in doing that, m- my thought, the only reason of doing that is to open up and make the Cup Series more wanted. Okay? So in doing that, with a charter system, you're limiting who can essentially guarantee a starting spot. All right. <clears throat> I'm taking Eldora. Last weekend, mm-hmm. 73 or whatever, 72 cars show up. Mm-hmm. What's the difference? The difference is NASCAR driver or NASCAR owners are a little more greedy than dirt car owners, and they want their charter to be worth X amount of dollars. If you open it up, then the charters are not going to be worth near as much. Well, I, I agree, but, I, but but my thought about it is though, okay, if you're gonna have a if you're gonna have an affordable race car, oh, I, I agree. And you're gonna have you. a charter. That's a double edged sword. I know. I agree so with you. <laughs> if you're gonna have an affordable car, get rid of charter. Uh, well, I agree with if you, but it's not gonna a, happen. <laughs> if you're gonna have a ten million dollar cup car, have charters. I get that, but you can't have both, in my opinion. I I agree, but this year because because of that, because of these new cars coming in, and everybody wanting to get into the cup series because now it's cheaper. To own a car, the price of charters skyrocketed. Oh, of course. Because there's way more demand than there is supply. And But it, it just, it, they're cutting their own throat. <laughs> I agree. Because eventually people are going to give up on it. I mean, if you've got 32 charters and they're starting 36 cars, okay. Mm, say there's 10 other cup teams. Say there's... Say there's 42 cup teams. Mm-hmm. They're not going. Some of these guys that that base home out of Charlotte, they're not going to Sonoma. No. Well, well it was going to look bad, and I've said this the whole time, and it 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 has had potential to happen, you know, before this, but now that they're getting more teams, it's got a lot more potential to happen. Say all ten of those teams qualify within the top twenty. Right. You're sending guys home. You're sending, say, six guys home that qualified way better than lower ones, but they had a charter. I know. I get it. I under. I one hundred percent agree with you. But I don't think the cup owners are going to give up, give that up because now they have something that is worth well a lot of money. Well, well. The reason NASCAR is not going to get rid of the charter, in my opinion, is because that's guaranteed their sponsorship, whether it's on a race car or whether it's whatever, is guaranteed sponsorship in the, in the, on the big broadcast, in the, uh, on the, I lost my train of thought, the, uh, (laughs) the series is guaranteed sponsorship within the series to be seen on TV. Exactly. That's the exactly. only reason because they had such a problem selling sponsorship that they had to do something to guarantee viewership. Yeah. In return. And, you know, it's it's sad that they've had to do that. But I I honestly think though, I mean, do you think about it? If you make something more affordable, you don't have to charge as much. If you take okay, I'm just using a number and it's not it, it's not right, but a cup car costs you ten million dollars. This year. Next year, it costs you $2 million. You don't need as much sponsorship money. No. But they, you think they're going to lower their expectation on that any? Well, they're going to just move it to something else, like we've talked about it before. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, okay, I don't have to spend this much money here, so I can spend it on 10 more engineers or oh, yes. whatever. Um, that's what the big teams will do. But the mom and pop teams, whatever, um, why shouldn't they have a a good piece of equipment going to the racetrack. I agree. That can run 
pretty much equally as anybody else. And it should. Uh, the way this car is going to be set up, yes, the cream will rise to the top. Good teams are going to be good teams. Well, the engineers are going to pull every. They're going. They're going to squeeze every bit of sweat out of it. They can. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and but, that's going to happen. But there's a lot more potential. Especially starting out. Well, I, you know, the the top ten is going to be the top ten. That's right. not going to change. But from eleventh to twenty second, whatever, whatever that that next top ten, eleven, twelve, I think you're going to see a lot more. Uh, it's, it's going to be a lot more competitive through that that area there. But you know, we'll see what happens. I don't know. But regardless, there's a lot of stuff that's going to be changing with that. Um, well, let's uh. We spend a lot of time on it, and I could spend all day on it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, speaking of a car real fast that's very similar, uh, SRX Series ran Saturday, Saturday night at yeah. Knoxville. Oh, uh, one of our guests that's been on here before, Scott Bloomquist, was in the field. Was an invite for a single race at, at Knoxville there. Um. E- Haley Deegan was in the field. Um, everybody knew Tony Stewart was probably going to be good come dirt tracks. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, nobody expected Michael Waltrip to all of a sudden be good come dirt tracks. I'm going to tell you what, he was good at Stafford, man. He was. He got out, you know, we, I think he got off the corner a little too low there. and Scooby-Doo there. But anyway, um, man, I'm going to tell you, he's, uh, he's kind of surprised me a lot. Uh, the first two races of that series, he he's he looked strong. He was he was fast. He was up on the wheel. I put it this way: I don't know if y- y- y'all heard it or not, but it was so he was so fast that he was trying his hardest to pass Tony Stewart. And Tony told him over the radio, he said, "If Michael Waltrip passes me and beats me at a dirt track, I'm going to have to go to therapy." <laughs> yeah, because. Uh, hey. I think I think it surprised Tony just as much, if not more, than it did us. But uh, oh yeah, yeah, that's that's uh that's pretty cool. And um, I was kind of wondering what those cars would do on dirt and how they. I know they I know they tested them some at Cherokee for sure. I know and a couple other places. But um, they reminded me of the Cup cars on dirt. Well, regardless what you do, it's an asphalt car on dirt. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and it's and and you know we we've seen we've seen Scott Bloomquist run the truck at Eldora. It's an asphalt car on dirt, yeah. and you cannot drive a asphalt car on dirt like you do a dirt car. He tried to. Scott tried to. He did it, and he made it look good through the heat race. He won his heat race or won the second heat race. Their heat race is kind of weird. Um, they have two heat races, but everybody in the field is in there. They completely invert the field for the second heat race. Okay. And then Scott finished. Or well, he started at the back of the first one. And just finished there, so I think he was just like, "All right, well, I'll just take the invert and then get up front right. instead of killing myself on this one," um, which was smart. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so he ended up winning the second heat race, um, and the car actually looked good, but he was he hung it out more more like a dirt car than anybody else was doing for a while. Uh, the problem with that was is car was fast if you did that car was would roll it would turn it would look good tire would last about you know 20 laps <laughs> and it was slick <laughs> yeah. slick slick and when it got slick scott spun out <laughs> a couple yeah. times yeah, ain't no grip back there in that right rear for sure but None. uh especially as that track got slick the track got slick and your tire was getting slick all at the same time oh it got bad yeah that's a perfect storm for sure but uh yeah, I I didn't really expect much out of Scott in that. After seeing him in the truck, I didn't really, you know, I kind of figured it would be the same. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, it, it did react a little better, I think, with him in that than it did the truck. If it had been a shorter race, yeah, it had been, it, he'd, he'd have been all up on it. Because he was still there for a while in the in the main. Uh, about halfway through the race, it just kind of fell off for him. Um, who I did expect a lot out of and who showed a lot, uh, because she had been in some heavier stock cars on dirt before. Haley Deegan, she's won, um, uh, what was it, Arca race? Yeah, I believe so. At Las Vegas, I think it was. Um, the, the dirt track at Las Vegas. Um, so watching her, I'm going to tell you what, she she looked so smooth. They had her in-car camera in there. 
and she just went in the corner and just, mm, you know, y'all can't see me, but I mean, she just, she sat there so calm and just, just turned the steering wheel where it needed to go and then turned back real easy. Like not, never, never looking like she was panicking in the car or just overdriving it at all. She just car control on dirt for her is, is, is insane to me well that's what i've said before i mean dude i think she needs to give up trucks and she needs to go race some dirt i think she does too i think she'd be really fat oh i tell you what i think she should do in in all honesty and i wish she would have done it and she she got in a little bit but not enough i really think she should have i think she got in some street stocks or something like that on dirt before um i really think before she got into truck series and stuff like that i really think she should have took some time running even if it had been just 604 late model or something like that i think she really could learn some car control throttle control all that because she's good on dirt she really is she is good yeah she she she, she seems to have that from riding the from doing the side-by-side deal and you and know running you, trucks running, and all that exactly you know, and so i wish she would i wish she would have done that and then and then if she wanted to transfer over to nascar fine but she would have had a lot better understanding of a heavy heavier car right yeah you know i feel like but yeah, but she looked good in it. she come up finished second took second on the last lap there um she she was battling tony there for a while it was outside if you start outside it was tough you had to get to the bottom especially halfway through that race just like it it turned out honestly just like bristol did with the cup cars there right over about halfway of the race, about fifty laps in, I know it was fifty laps, twenty five laps in, you just better got to the bottom, right? Because it was slick. Yeah. Well, hey, they learning, man. Maybe, maybe I doubt it, but maybe Eldora will be be a, be a little different. Uh, it's gonna be a fast racetrack for them cars. Um, yeah, I think they might be able to, because corners are so much more sweeping at Eldora, and there's so much more banking. I'm hoping they can kind of sit it up on the top and well, we saw we, we see how the trucks there. have done there, and the trucks right. have done well on the top there. So, uh, so maybe it will make for a pretty good show there. We'll see, but uh, but yeah, hats off to them guys for making that stuff happen, and um, and Haley for doing well she did, and and Tony for getting the win. Yep, I think he's yep. leading the points for sure now. Yeah, speaking of points, real fast, um, I want to know something. We've we've touched on this. I really want to know something. Kyle Larson has the exact same amount of top fives. He's got one more top ten than Denny Hamlin. How is Denny Hamlin still in the points lead by was nine or ten points? Yeah. How? Kyle, Kyle's got four wins. Denny's got none. Zero. Yeah. Not real sure about that. I guess he's. I mean, I know Kyle's had a couple bad. I think mean, he blew a motor at Talladega or something. He's had a couple bad finishes, I but guess. I don't know. But uh, but speaking of man. Dang, but he, he dude, killing them, dude. It's insane. He is killing them. And it's so cool to watch, too, man. And, you know, kind of like we said earlier, taking chances and and getting uh, getting the uh, the the uh, track position when you need it, he sure uh, sure gets it done pretty quick. I mean, he puts it three wide, do whatever you got to do, get the get lead early off restarts, and, and he's gone, dude. I mean, it just – and he – you know, me and David talked about it earlier. He's just he he does not kill the car. He's just so no. easy with the car and so so easy on entry. He reminds me of Kevin Harvick years ago, especially at Phoenix, and that's what kind of you know. And Atlanta, right? Especially, especially with the entry, it's just unbelievable how much time he gains on exit off of entry. And that sounds weird, but you watch these guys. I mean, they close on him so hard, and they just and it looks like horsepower difference to me and a lot of people think that on the on you know we see him off you know coming off and on the back straight away he's pulling them four or five car lengths mm-hmm. and a lot of people just you know say that's motor well i think a lot of that's ex- our entry of how 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 good he is on entry and how well he sets up his uh his apex and 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 center off is is insane yeah the time he makes up i really think this goes back and I'm not trying to harp on it, but I really do think that comes from the dirt world that comes from getting a, especially a sprint car that comes from, I I know the corners are a lot wider, a lot bigger, a lot, whatever, but the principle is still similar. You get the car turned early, slowed down and turned early. 
you can drive off a whole lot faster. I don't care what kind of car you're in. That's always the way it is. Oh yeah, no doubt. So well, I you know I kind of look at it and 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 I was talking with somebody at work actually today about this and I kind of look at it as you go to a bat cage and you spend two weeks hitting a hundred mile an hour fastball and then you can go in the next week and you try to hit a fifty mile an hour fastball. Once you set your mind to hitting a fifty mile an hour or a fifty mile an hour ball, not a fastball, but you're going to cream it every time. Well, I kind of look at that as Kyle, his hand-eye coordination, his thoughts, his everything in a dirt, in a sprint car or even a dirt late model, whatever, so much more fast pace. Oh, yeah. Same concept, but when he gets to Nashville, I mean, dude, it's just so slow motion for him. I think he can just, he can just think everything through so well. And yeah, he does a good job at that. But uh just makes it that much more impressive to me. Turn around going from Texas, winning the million there. Then turn around going back and jumping in a sprint car and winning Win. the first night out. Winning two of the three races, I think. Yeah. And uh then yeah. Third, go, I think. Other yeah, go to Nashville this week, win it, then turn around and go to Pennsylvania. <laughs> Sprint week. He's racing tonight, I think yep. it is. At Hudson Speedway, I believe. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, it's just unbelievable, man, to see that. And, you know, kind of like we said earlier, talking with uh, talking with Joey is, you know, I, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And he's doing very well what he's doing. He enjoys what he's doing. Um, he's keeping his game up by doing what he's doing. So, uh, man, I sure wouldn't change nothing, man. I'd be, nah. I'd be scared to change a thing nah. right now. You you let that boy go home and sit there for a few days. He 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 drive himself crazy. He he liable to screw up come Sunday. So uh, he wouldn't know how to drive no more. Exactly. So, uh, <laughs> but I just I, I, th- I think, I think he'd figure it out quick. Oh, I think he would too. But uh, you know, just keep that thing going, man. It's really cool, and it's just so cool to me that you know a lot of these guys go home and they'll, and I know some of them will go on and 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 run the simulator all week or run i racing all week, whatever they can do to prep for the race the next week at Nashville or Pocono or whatever. And instead, Kyle's going and running dirt or whatever else. And it just don't, it doesn't matter. It's like he does, he, he don't overthink the situation. No, no, no. And like we said the other day, he's so calm and he does not get anxious about anything that I, I guess that, that plays a big part in it because I mean, you know, you, you can keep yourself overthinking things. We We all know that. And, um and having a good mindset and a good calm calmness about you is uh is 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 a big part of anything you do for sure for sure and that's uh, i told my daddy that actually yesterday when we was watching the race he got out of the car um after winning i was like look at him he just act like just whatever he's no, great don't even i mean he smiled a little bit but you know i mean he, he's he's happy he's proud oh yeah he it. is but he just he's he's not an overly excitable person no, and not. i don't and another thing like we was talking with Joey about fitness earlier, and I don't know this boy got time to go to the gym for nothing. Cause I don't know when he can, but apparently he does or goes and runs or I rides bike eats, or I don't know. I think he just eats lettuce. I think so, but um, I don't know what he does. <laughs> it's it's crazy. He might be a buck oh five, maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe, but he's he can get out of any car. I don't care if it's three hundred degrees outside. He can get out of any car and just look cool as a cucumber, just like uh, okay. Yep, that's good. That's Shave. good. It's crazy. I don't know. It's uh like we say, he's a freaking nature man, and it's it's really cool. It's, it's awesome to be able to see that kind of talent in our era. Um, see how well he's doing because uh because man, I'm gonna tell you what I know that that it's it's hard to compare talent from one era to the next. I mean, you can't say uh you can't say Dale Earnhardt was better than Richard Petty. You can't say no. You, you can't, can't say compare. Jimmy Johnson was. Right. This you can't say, and you, now you can't. I can't say that Kyle Larson is better than Jimmy Johnson. Some people would try to tell you he is. Well, but I can't, I can't say that he is. Is he? Maybe so. I don't I, know. You know, I I don't know, but I just but my comparison to it is, and the reason that I say that the the talent coming along and now in 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 this day and time is so much it stands out more. Is because of the equipment is so oh yes equal yes so you know back then it's a lie if anybody will tell you that 
Richard Petty wasn't cheating up and day up and down every everybody week. was <laughs> exactly. Um, they had much more money. They could do things different. Well, now there wasn't a whole lot of rules either. Exactly. Well, now it's I mean it is so exact to every point that it takes that extra edge. I think, and I mean, I think it comes from the seat. I mean, that's pretty it's much the to. only difference. It's got to and a and a. Uh, the seat and and there still is little 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 stuff that a crew chief can make a difference on and and they are exploiting every bit of it yes, right sir. now I believe oh yeah definitely one thing that I will say that they may be better on than a lot of others in that field them headers on that number five boy he got some headers on there now and I know who I I know the people to build them headers there you go. They got some uh, profab headers on there. I saw saw that day, which I knew it already. But that is absolutely awesome to see them uh, in Victor Lane <laughs> for uh, for Lawrence. How long now? Honestly, I don't know. I can't even remember because uh, Hendrick has been uh, has been in Victor Lane quite a good bit here lately. Well, more than anybody else ever. Yeah, you no doubt. So uh, hats off to Andrew and them guys for uh, for getting that uh, getting that together and and. and Getting that relationship with them, that's pretty cool. They put a post out about like Earl does every week, posting all their winners. And a lot of times Earl's and Profabs overlap <laughs> a lot of a lot of cases. Oh yeah. Um but they ha they make a collage. <laughs> no lie, this collage today probably had twenty, twenty five drivers on it. I'm like, it rained everywhere the weekend. Where were these people racing at? I don't, <laughs> I don't understand, man. It's crazy. How you have that many people to one? There wasn't the five tracks running across the country. No, nah, I don't know. They just, it's insane. It's, it's winners. It is truly insane. It really is. But, you know, you know, we are proud to be a part of, uh, and being, being, being buddies and, 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 uh, having good relationship with these guys, Profab and, and, um, Earl Ramey and SRI, man. Everywhere you look, they're they're in Victor Lane week in and week out. So that is really cool. But um Yeah, it is. But somebody else running profab hitters that I know of. I didn't even know this for a long time. I didn't even know he was running profab hitters. And I saw a winner's thing from Profab and I was like, Oh, he's running Profab. Our buddy Derek Griffith. Yes, sir. He uh he gave him a third place last night at his home track up there in Hudson, New Hampshire. Man, he was he his back was against the wall though, man. I'm gonna tell you what. Holy, dude, I'm gonna tell you. He uh the only place I've ever seen him draw good is at uh is in Florida at Speed Weeks. Yeah. It's the only place he ever draws good. Other than that, he's gonna draw in the back of a heat race. No doubt. But uh I've unfortunately being it was Father's Day, um I was down at the lake hanging out with my dad, um Eating some. <laughs> Let me tell you this quick, real quick. We left church yesterday, right? Went to go eat with Kayla's parents, her dad, for uh, for Father's Day. My mother in law cooked meatloaf. Had meatloaf. Sweet. Um, mashed potatoes and gravy. Meatloaf. Creamy. Ma, more meatloaf. Now. <laughs> uh, mashed potatoes and gravy and some biscuits. All right, we leave there. And we're going to eat supper with my parents. Get there. What does my mom have to cook? Meatloaf. Meatloaf. Mashed potatoes and gravy. Green beans. Biscuits. But she did have macaroni and cheese also. Really? <laughs> Dead serious. All right, so which one was best? No feelings hurt here. Just which one was oh, best? Yeah. I got to go with my mom's because she had macaroni and cheese with it. Ah, oh, there you go. <laughs> All right. We'll give it to her. Which one was the most moist meatloaf? Me and Kayla actually talked about this yesterday. Because I, I, I'm i kind of a thing. With, I love meatloaf, but if it's dry, I don't like it. I'm the same way. And actually, my mom's was the moisture of the, the two. Moist, the moist. The, the, <laughs> the most moist. That's too many, it's the too moisture, many moves. The, 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 the mostest. The moistest. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I give up. Uh, there, there was... It, it it was it was moist, super moist, <laughs> super moist, super moist. Did y'all have some super moist cake while you were in? I had some uh, cheesecake afterwards. Jam up, jelly tight, man. Well, that's good. <laughs> but I'm glad you enjoyed that. Uh, so it was. I had some homemade 
for Father's Day. I had some homemade hamburger casserole and it was jam up. Sweet. Good stuff. Kayla has a new uh new version of homemade. And I blame my mom for this because she got her like a cooking apron that says this. It says, if I stir it, it's homemade. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's it. That's better than the uh, apron that I told her she needed to get. <laughs> <laughs> Probably so. <laughs> I messed that up. But yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's for another day. Oh, Lord. But that's cool, man. I'm glad y'all had a good time there with that. And, uh, but it was good. But uh, but yeah, um, looking at what Derek Griffith done and going back, this went all the way around. That's sorry, Derek. Way too, just, sorry, Derek. You. Sorry, Derek. We, 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 we messed up. This is a long episode. I know that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's been good. Um, there, they got sent to the back three different times. Had to come from back three times and still finished third. So, imagine if he didn't do that. I know the. Yeah. Uh, apparently, he used the chrome horn a little bit because the uh, the right yeah. front was all caved in on the car. <laughs> yeah, like he had to move a couple of people there for sure. But uh, yeah, if that had not happened, I'm pretty sure he would have uh, took home the W. He, he's good at that track. Yeah, he's that. he's so good at the track that the track sponsors him. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> he got it going on. That's when you know you're good at a track. Yeah, for sure. And he made a post the other day, um, a blurred out picture. So uh, everybody that's listening, be on the lookout. Uh, Derek's got some big news coming soon. Um, hopefully it's uh, going to be exciting for everybody. And uh, He's going to have a blurry race car. Yeah. Is that news? That's it. He's going to be driving with some... Bottle, some Coke bottle glasses. That's what it's going to mean. Is that what it is? Uh, is that he needs a vision test? Is that what it yeah, loses? He's that's getting glasses? Got to gotta get something there. But, uh, yes, yeah, so be looking out for that. Uh, really cool news. We're excited uh, to hear all about that and um, hopefully get him on here and talk about it. So uh, we'll be ready for it. For sure. All right. More cool news this week. Woo! Our buddy, Trey Kelly. Yes, sir. Him and Kyle Bonovich made the trip to Ohio. Mid-Ohio Mid Sports Ohio. Car Park. Yes, sir. Go-karts. Running to some WKA road course carts around there. And I am sorry, I do not know all the verbiage for the classes that they have in road course nah, racing anymore. I don't I don't know anything about it. We're going to get them on here and talk about it a little bit sometime. I know that Trey runs a 206 Briggs motor. Yeah. Basically a sealed motor. It's kind of like a crate motor for a go-kart. Yeah. Well, Kegel raised an engine on the side of that thing, man. Yeah. Mario. Yeah, that's pretty cool there. So, uh, glad they took the trip up there. I know they fought some weather uh, throughout the week, a weekend. Um, but uh, so the first race, they made like, like two, three laps. Yeah. Finished it on the red flag. If they start a race, it's official. Wow. Yeah, because they said uh, Kyle ran one race, he ran one lap. Jesus. And they called it. It was official. They won it. Yeah. <laughs> so, hey, I wouldn't mind it that way anyway. I know they ended up running some on uh, Sunday, I think it was. Yeah. So, um, Trey had a, ended up getting a flat tire one day. Finished second one race and ended up getting a flat tire. Yeah. Well, I know he won uh, He won the Roval at Charlotte. Yes. Yes, he did. Last lap pass there. Last corner pass, I think it was. But yeah. uh, not real sure. But anyway, that was pretty cool. So, uh Hats off of them guys. Uh, they got they got a good uh, they got a good package going and and a good team there. And um, we're gonna try to get somewhere and see them boys soon. Uh, run. They, 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 it's actually pretty cool. I like I always thought I'd never say I don't. I, I used to never like road course racing, but now I have gotten to where I do, and um, it's pretty cool watching those carts on and road, on road courses and. Uh, to me, it's a lot more competitive than it is now on dirt. So, um, really cool for them guys that make the trip up there and do that. I think they caught a uh, sprint car race while they were up there. Yeah, um, so so Kyle or no Kyle wasn't in there. Kyle race. wasn't in there. Rico was there. Yeah, um, I turned it on on flow race and caught yeah. some of it. Yeah, so that was pretty cool for them to be able to get up there and do that. Um, and uh, I'm pretty sure they uh, Kyle got enough he needed uh, points wise to. Uh, seal the championship so that's pretty cool yes 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 cool deal on the go-kart so we had to get them on on here one day yeah for talk sure. about that um i got a little rant i guess it's rant time 
We need we need to get a, a sound for rant times, you know. Yeah. I don't know which button which they don't have. Well, well it's, it's, we don't have one right now. We're gonna get one. We're gonna get a sound for for our end of the show rant time. All right. All right. My rant for this week. Ultimate Super Late Models were supposed to be at Sumter Speedway two weeks ago. I went to said race. This was week four, Eldora. Uh, I went to said race. It rained a little bit. Well, it rained for a few hours. Um, they ended up running still the four cylinders, street stocks, blah, blah, blah. Ultimate said they didn't want to run on track. It just wasn't good for supers. I'm not disagreeing with them. I'm not disagreeing saying it wasn't good for supers. I feel like there could have been a little more, and that was late getting out of there still, but I feel like there could have been a little more don't you track now that I was on track. I feel like there could have been run in a little better than it was and got track good enough to run supers. But that being aside, set aside. All right, two weeks passed. We went to Eldora one week. They had rescheduled uh, the Ultimates to come back to Sumter June the 19th, Saturday night. So, um, we go to Cole's birthday party and stuff, and I talk to Sterling. Yep, we're leaving here. I'm about to go get ready to go to go to Sumter, and weather's looking good. Uh, they're going to run the Ultimates over there tonight. Figure it's going to be a decent crowd. Well, I get to look, and there's some more tracks running. This is just my theory. Just my theory. And and don't, don't uh, I, I know nothing on this, but I think a lot of the guys that was going to be running the Ultimates, I think Michael Brown was one of the few that committed to coming to Sumter. Uh, I think a lot of the guys that was running the Ultimates weren't going to show up. I think they made plans to race elsewhere. There came up a 25, what I saw, all I saw was about a 25% chance of rain. At Sumter on Saturday night. I'm not saying it didn't ever rain because it may have rained over there. It may have rained a little bit. I don't know. But I do know that Ultimates postponed again till July 31st. They still ra- raced that night. They were done by a little after 9 o'clock. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm, well, I'm going to go ahead and say real quick. I got about a. 90% chance there's going to be at least a 25% chance of rain July, 20th, July 31st. Exactly. So, so what are they going to do? My point is, if you are going to, and I, and I, I told our buddy even Cole Perkins this on, online, I'm like, look, you know, I'm not disagreeing with them trying to save the drivers a ride four, hour, four or five hours if it's going to rain. I'm not disagreeing with that. But if you postpone a race Every time there's a 25% chance of rain, you will never race in South Carolina. No. <laughs> Not never. In summer. No. Not at all. So, I don't know. There's my rant. Um, I feel like they could have got it in. I still think they could have. Um, I know I sent them a post on Facebook, and they deleted it. They didn't like my thought. Uh <laughs> <laughs> they don't tend to like us. Sumner doesn't. No, no, not Sumner. Yeah, Sumner was fine with it. Oh, um, um the Ultimate Ultimates series. didn't like. It. Yeah, oh. Ultimates didn't like it. So, sorry. I ain't out to please nobody. I'm out to tell my side of it. So, well, I hate it for them. We'll see what happens on thirty first. <laughs> That's it. Maybe there won't be a twenty two percent chance. Or twenty two might be good. Twenty five is too much. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Bring some rain tires. Uh, exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, there's my rant for the week. What you got? Anything? Well, no. I'm I'm pretty positive today. Right. Um Glad somebody is. But <laughs> yeah. Uh you know, everything's good for me, so I, I I'm all with your rant though. I agree one hundred percent. So I back your rant hundred <laughs> percent. Good. Or I back it twenty five percent, which is hundred percent most of the time. Yeah. In summer. In most cases. <laughs> In ultimate land. <laughs> Uh, oh lordy alright guys this has been way too long we had an episode this long in a long long time yeah I, 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 nobody's probably gonna hear this rant I bring so my rant matter. back bring my rant back this has been too long of a show I gotta go home We had it was a good time though you, you are home I don't wanna hear it <laughs> what you gonna do you already done took a shower what you gonna do go eat some supper and chill that, out and watch baseball you got it double header Atlanta Braves tonight I'm gonna take out the second the second game here <laughs> I'm gonna turn on some uh, flow racing, maybe to catch some uh, 
Speedway. Speedway. Are they running? I don't know. I just figure running. I'll turn on Flow Racing. There'll be a race somewhere. There will be a race somewhere. There will be a race somewhere. I guarantee you that. If not, I'll watch a replay of a race somewhere. Yeah. I watched a replay of a, at El Dor and I found us on there. So you know. Oh really? Yeah, it was from far, far away. But yeah, we found. I found us. <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll watch something. I don't care. Anyway, guys, I uh, want to thank, as always, like we said, SRI Performance, uh, Stock Car Steel and Aluminum, Draco Springs, as always, coming on here. Um, we appreciate those guys a lot. Randy Keen over there with the MRK Motorsports Consulting, along with SRI. Um, couldn't do it without you guys. We appreciate it. Um, Earl Ramey Racing Engines. The, this show is mostly about Earl Ramey Racing Engines. So, Earl, we appreciate you a whole lot. Uh, Earl and Derek went up to Portsmouth, Ohio this past weekend, just FYI. Uh, had some horrible, horrible luck. Yeah. Uh, so Friday night got rained out for them. Uh, Saturday night, they were leading the, the heat race, running really good. and But they had sprint cars there. And when you put sprint cars and... Late models on track at the same time. It does some really weird stuff to the dirt. Um, you, I don't know what it is. You can't really... it. Well, we noticed it also while we were at Portsmouth. Just, I think it's just that dirt in general. It it's don't fine. really make a... It's fine. It don't really make a uh, cushion, no. cushion at all. So anyway, uh, Derek got in the corner. Um, come out the corner. I guess he kind of jumped the quote-unquote cushion that's not there. Hit the slick stuff, hit the wall, not the fuel cell blow out of the car. Dang. And so he had some bad, bad luck. Yeah. Broke J bar, broke the drive shaft, broke a lot of stuff. <laughs> so. Well, hopefully get it put back together and be ready for another weekend. Oh, yeah. So it, I talked to Earl yesterday on the way down to the lake. He, oh, well, that's racing. That's it. It's part of it sometimes. What you got to do, you got to just. Gotta love it. Clear your head up and move forward. That's it. Put it back together and try again. And, uh, he, man, he's had some speed. Just ain't caught a whole lot of luck yet. Did a little bit at, uh, at Cherokee. So I look for Derek to be up there here soon with his Earl Ramey racing engine in that thing. Um, but anyway, guys, also want to thank Forward Bike Apparel. Uh, I don't know if y'all saw it or not. But old Coltrane put together his new ride. They were going to put it together for the unrestricted class out there, the A-class, as they call it. Um, But they decided, let's pull it out the corner, put all the stuff on it. They ran the other car pretty hard for a long time. And uh, let's put all all the stuff on that car, get it rolling. And uh, he he, he got it out for the first night and did okay with it. Got caught up in some tires and stuff, being an axle, a few things, you know, but... Yeah, all in all, good first night with it. Small show just to work the bugs out. So that's right. Good to see that. Uh, checkered the race hub, racing social media all the time. That's all it is, racing guys. If you're not on checkered, get on checkered. You will love it. You'll enjoy it. It is all race guys talking about racing. That is all it is. No political junk on there. No nothing like that. It is positive racing all the time. So you guys get on checkered now. That's it for sure. Definitely. I can't man, I tell you what, speaking of checkered. The cool thing about checkered, I think, and we we it's been a while since we really went into detail with checkered, but the cool yeah. thing I like about checkered is is the different the different types of racing that's on there that I think people kind of forget about, which I do, because oh, yeah. sometimes it's cool, because, I mean, I'm not really into snowmobile racing or whatever, but you get into it, and it's actually really freaking cool, because you don't ever see it in the other places. Right. right. So, uh, so definitely don't forget about Checkered. All different types of stuff you can see on there, and, and actually, you kind of get involved and, and get interested in seeing some of that different type of racing, so it's really pretty cool. They got groups on there for lawnmower racing. That's what I'm saying, but it's really cool. It's not just... Oh, I'm going to go see Dirt Lake Models. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but there's a whole other group for that other stuff, so no, it's really, really cool. wrong with that. No, there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, speaking of, speaking, speaking of, we got to say this. We didn't even say it last week. While we were at uh, Eldora, we actually got to speak, not very long, but we got to speak to Jack Hewitt. 
<laughs> we sure did, man. He was working the daggum <laughs> pit gate thing down there. I was like, what? I'm like, you checking our cup, see if we got any alcohol? <laughs> really? Yeah, <laughs> really? He probably want to take it from you. But yeah. Uh, yeah, that was pretty neat to see him, though. He sat right up on the, uh, right up in the grandstands and watched the, watched the main. So, yep. That was pretty cool. But uh, anyway, uh, RMAC Solution, definitely keep, keep them in mind as well. Um, for all your fabrication needs of any sort, um, you name it, plasma cutters, CNC, whatever, uh, whatever type you can think of, they got them. Um, welders, what it don't make no difference. What you need for your welders, what you need for your plasma cutters, they can get it. Parts for the uh, your your pre existing uh, machines that you got at your shop, or if you're looking to uh, to broaden your horizons and get something a little bigger or newer or nicer or whatever. Uh, you can get a brand new machine from them, or you can get nice used stuff from them. They'll go get it, bring it to you, set it up, show you how to run it, you name it. Uh, go go check them out for sure and uh, see what they're all about. For sure. Well, guys, we appreciate all y'all hanging out with us tonight. We appreciate Joey Colter coming on here. We appreciate Jeremy Steele, Jameson McBride coming on here. It, it's J Mac. He's the man. And uh, everybody else, we appreciate her all that. We said hooking us up with those guys to talk about. Um, so it'd be cool. But we appreciate you guys coming on here, hanging out with us. Um, if you made it to this point, we appreciate you. I barely made it to this point, so I don't know if everybody did. <laughs> if you make it to this point, please send us uh, just a post on some of our posts on on our social media or, or yeah, a say, message or something. Just say, naked, I made it. Naked chicken. Naked chicken. Take us, text us that. Naked chicken. <laughs> if you may, if you may, that's the first thing that came. My man, Why just, did naked chicken come to your mind? I, I, I'm hungry, bro. Okay, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. <laughs> You're making like, me do work. Like, do you like ain't Dave, giving me no break. Like, like Dave with Rebel Sun said, he, go, he wanted to open a restaurant and have on the menu, chicken nipples. Chicken. <laughs> hey, <laughs> do chickens have nipples? I don't know, but I mean, you know, it's you know, they got breasts, so I guess I don't I, know. I, think, uh, I don't know. It's a thing. You might have to check into it. But oh, we're getting delusional. <laughs> normally, in my at work this long, I get a break, so I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we'll chat, talk with y'all sometime <laughs> later.